Mariners of Oklahoma coming into Pitt Stadium. Opened with a 19-7 win over Stanford last week. Coach Barry Switzer, 12th season, 107-21-3 his record. That's the top record among coaches at an institution five years or more. They're out of the Big Eight Conference. Last time these two teams played was 1975 and Oklahoma won it going away 46 to 10. It's a cool autumnal afternoon for this intersectional meeting with Oklahoma holding a decisive edge in the series record. You see there seven one and one. But the Pitt Panthers a big strong muscular football team that was so highly picked in the preseason poll. They wobble some in their opening game, losing to Brigham Young University. And the crowd uh, now waiting for the Pitt Panthers to make their appearance as the band strikes up. And it looks like they're having a little trouble getting out of the locker room and getting onto the field. So let us spend a moment with Coach Frank. The temperature is 60 degrees. The wind is out of the northwest at 15. Pretty comfortable afternoon. That wind is gusting sometimes to more than 15 miles an hour. Dante Wiley a freshman quarterback is going to be the man in the middle to return the kick for the Pitt Panthers and Tim Leshar will kick it off for the Oklahoma Sooners Sooners obviously the visiting team and on the road will be wearing the white uniforms the very interesting part of this ball game is the speed of Oklahoma versus the muscle of Pittsburgh Pittsburgh's offense was very inconsistent in their opening performance against Brigham Young so you can see the wind is gusting around out there on the field and may cause some trouble if one of these teams gets into a situation where a kick has particular meaning in the ball game. The sun came out, broke free, and started shining on us just about an hour ago. We had rain showers through the night and through the morning. But it looks like we're in for a comfortable go this afternoon as Oklahoma and Pitt meet for the tenth time. And it's a very short kickoff for Leshar coming down to number 42, Anthony Brown. Brown gets a big hole and pops it all the way out to the 31. The Pittsburgh offensive alignment opens up with John Conjimi at quarterback. John is 185 pounder. Chuck Scales will be sharing the duty at tailback. And the fullback will be Tom Brown. He's a 225 pound sophomore. Bill Wallace is a wide receiver and had a very big ball game in the opener. And the flanker is Jeff Casper, 6'3", 205. He is a big target. And the Panthers' first play will be out of the eye formation. And they give the ball off to number 32. That is Charles Gladman, who started the ball game instead of Chuck Scales. So Foge Fazio changed his mind and put Gladman, a 205-pounder, in. Tom Johnson is the tight end, 250 pounds. Randy Dixon at tackle, 285. Bob Brown at guard, 265. The center is Barry Pettijohn at 255. Greg Christie a guard, 280. And of course, Bill Freilich, the other tackle, and they're pumping for the Heisman Trophy, 285. It's one of the biggest offensive fronts in all of college football, and uh, aren't many pro teams that big either. Here's the defensive alignment now for Oklahoma. They open up with uh, Murphy, Clemens, Casillas, Reed, and Reed in there, Richard and Darrow, Donnie Jones and Brian Bosworth, the backers. And the defensive secondary is Hall, Rockford, Brown, and Stanbury. And Stanbury is starting for a fourth consecutive year. And here is some bad news right off the bat for the Oklahoma folks. Keith, it appears to be. Kevin Murphy. Yeah. Kevin Murphy, who is being touted for All-American honors, a defensive end, and without question, one of the best in the country at that position, and he is down on the field. And Oklahoma came to Pittsburgh without Spencer Tillman. He did not make the trip. Let's go back and see how Murphy was uh, banged up on the play. Number 39, all big eight defensive end. He wins the battle collision right there with a the tight end. Now he's trying to separate himself from the tight end. Releases over. The fullback uh, looks like the fullback was blocking on him and just ran right over him. Looked like he ran right over his legs. Tom Brown was the blocker. He's helped off the field, so that's two doses of bad news, and the day has just barely started. It is third down, and six yards to go for Pittsburgh now. The ball is sitting at the 34. 
And from the snap set, they hand it off inside, and nothing doing there. Charles Gladman runs right into Tony Casillas, the junior out of Tulsa, and Casillas decks him short of the line of scrimmage. And so the Pitt Panthers will have to go to the punt after three snaps of the ball. And doing the punting for Pittsburgh will be Chris Jellick. He is a reserve quarterback and punts very well. He averaged better than 46 yards on seven kicks last week, the longest being 50. Derek Shepard is the return man for Oklahoma very fast. Jellick spins it out of there, gives Shepard a chance to handle it, and he just barely was able to get the fair catch call off before he had to lunge ahead. But Oklahoma comes up with fair field position on this at their 36. And Danny Bradley, 5'10", 185, will open at quarterback with Lydell Carr, a freshman, 195-pounder at fullback. Earl Johnson moves over to halfback in the absence of Tillman, 195. Steve Sewell will be in that wing position, 205. And the wide receiver will be Buster Rhymes, who started his career at Oklahoma as a running back and after a year off has come back as a wide receiver and leads the team. They're in the wishbone formation. And oftentimes they will move a man out, and most of the time that'll be Sewell moving out, and Bradley drops straight back to throw, trying to run away from the pressure, and Pittsburgh nailed him back on the 25 as Bob Bushkowski, the big junior defensive tackle from Monroeville, Pennsylvania, broke in there and messed up the play. He went back for his set on a straight drop of short drop of three, and uh, there was nobody to throw the ball to. This is so uncommon for Oklahoma to throw a drop back pass on first down. Their offensive coordinator, Mac Brown, who's a bright young man, has added this auxiliary offense to the wishbone. Now it's Sewell moving around and going into that flanker spot. He sets up at an angle, and this time they try to take it over the left side. They give it in there to the fullback, Lydell Carr. And Carr moves out to about three yards, up to about the 28 for Oklahoma. So we're looking at third and long. Up front, it's Keith Jackson at tight end, 235, a freshman. David Dillingham at tackle, 270. Jeff Pickett at guard is 275. The center is Chuck Thomas at 275. Paul Ferrer at guard at 260. And Brent Burks is the other tackle at 270 pounds. They're big enough on offense. No question about that. Right now, they're looking at third and very long. Third down at about 19 as Bradley hands that ball off inside to Lydell Carr. And Pittsburgh will have none of it. They just jumped all over him at the line of scrimmage. And so Oklahoma will have to kick the ball away after three snaps. A little different beginning for the two teams. In fact, it would be opposite, I think, of what you might expect. Mike Winchester walked on and uh, walked out last week. And uh, Barry Switzer, just before the ball game, said, you're kicking, Mike. And he responded with a better than 42-yard average on eight kicks. There's no pressure on him. And a fair catch is called by the Pittsburgh's Dante Wiley up at the 34-yard line. So there the Pitt Panthers will have it first down as we have now seen both teams handle it and punt it. P24 to play in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. I talked to both teams some yesterday. Here's what Danny Bradley had to say about Oklahoma's game plan. But I like to say that uh, I think the passing game would be a shock to Pitt to Mark. I, I think they feel like we would... Uh, uh, run the ball a lot more than pass, and I think that uh, we're going to do a little bit of everything tomorrow. Well, they showed that coming out. Mac Brown having come from Appalachian State to the Oklahoma staff in his first year, and it was definitely a different look. But right now, let's see what happens with Pittsburgh's second possession from their own 34. First down. Con Jimmy stays with the ground game. They run it up the middle with Charles Gladman, a freshman out of Akron, Ohio, brought down by Dante Jones for Oklahoma. Now let's check in with our reporter from the sidelines, Tim Brent. Keith, they're still working on Kevin Murphy, the right defensive end for Oklahoma. He has sprained his foot. You saw on the replay he was run over. He got his foot twisted underneath. It is the inside of his right foot. They are keeping ice on it right now. They've been working on him since they brought him over to the sideline. They don't know whether he'll be able to get back into the ballgame or not. Let me tell me about the field. It's been raining. Is it fairly dry down there now? It's in excellent shape. It's a fast track, Keith. All righty. Con Jimmy back. Play action. Passes away. Pass is good to the tight end, Tom Johnson. Out about the 39. Well short of the first down. So you'll be looking at third down and about four yards to go for the Pitt Panthers. Pittsburgh is starting out very conservatively, trying to be more patient than they were last two weeks ago against Boston uh, Brigham Young when they 
mixed up their pass a little more than they wanted to. Big team like this, one would expect they'd just try to beat on Oklahoma, wouldn't they? That's the game plan, I think. Third down, a little more than four, and trying to come outside with it is Glattman, and uh, Oklahoma runs to the football as well as any team in football. Fourth down coming up. Let's check in with Jim Lampley. Keith, it's final in Lansing. You can chalk up a victory for Jerry Faust at 24-20. Key sequence of the game with the heat out of the kitchen for Jerry and folks. The kick is away by Jellick on fourth down. It's a high-hanging punt. It forces Sheriff Shepard into a fair catch call back at his own 25. A 35-yard punt by Jellick with nine minutes and 33 seconds to play in the first quarter. And no... Oklahoma now with its second possession of the football game and they're back where they were before and Murphy's on his way to the clubhouse so it looks like Kevin Murphy may have a serious injury it could be a broken foot. A tough loss for Oklahoma he was the defensive player in the big gate last year just an outstanding player. Now we get movement offensively as they flex number 88 Jackson way wide to the right go into a true wishbone set and then up the middle and it goes to that front man a fumble on the football and it looks like Pittsburgh's got it. Lydell Carr hitting into the middle. Well when you and have it they stripped him and here's a big break for the Panthers. One thing you worry about a freshman fullback reading the with a triple option play Carr is a true freshman just been on the campus three weeks here's the read option the quarterback is going to fake the ball to the fullback he decides to leave it with him but at the same time that the ball is handed to him a Pittsburgh lineman strips the ball right out and Pittsburgh has a great break. so the Panther big defensive front jumps in there and whacked him away from the football and here are the Panthers with a big break first down at the Oklahoma 25 gun Jimmy pitches the ball to Gladman he cuts it over the right side and turns it inside the 20 down close to the 16. Here we see what momentum means. Pittsburgh could not make a first down. Back on their end of the field, they get a break. Their motivation level increases. A little bit of a damper put on Oklahoma and a big play on first down. Interesting, they went to the right side behind Brown and Dixon to pick up that gain. That's the tight end side. They have tried one time behind Freelich, their All-American left tackle. Second down and two. Can Jimmy again gives to Gladman. This time Oklahoma penetrates Brian Bosworth, the strong side linebacker. Came popping through and uh, got him behind the line of scrimmage back around the 19. The Oklahoma coaches say that Bosworth is going to be one of their best linebackers. Red shirt freshman starting his second game of the season. Already showing promise of being one of the best ones they've ever had. Gladman has now carried the ball seven of eight times that Pittsburgh has handled it. Big down with a blitz coming. Third and three. They're going to run it. They go to Gladman outside. They hit him, slow him down, deck him on the 20. So again, there is the example of how well Oklahoma's defensive people run to the football. Dante Jones got him first. Sonny Brown put him away. Good team speed is a trademark of the Oklahoma football teams. By team speed, using your hands. Plays to the outside, coming off the block, moving out as a group, three, four, five men there for the tackle. Mark Brasco, a freshman out of Jeanette, Pennsylvania, is in for a 37-yard field goal try, and uh, this will be his first in college football. A little pressure on him. The kick is up. Plenty of leg on it, and it's good. And so Pittsburgh, unable to penetrate for the touchdown, gets three points out of it on the 37-yard field goal. And at seven minutes and 29 seconds to play in the first half, the first quarter, the Sooners have gone to the lead. Uh, get it right yet. The Panthers have gone to the lead. Keep what Pittsburgh is doing on defense in the first two possessions of Oklahoma. They're crowding, forcing like the old Pittsburgh teams of the past, trying to make something happen. On first down, they had nine, nine Panthers up on the line of scrimmage. Two weeks from today, Notre Dame and Missouri, when last I heard, it was a 28-28 time, Wisconsin and Missouri, with Missouri having lost last week to Illinois in a close one. But Notre Dame with a comeback today, and Wisconsin defeats Missouri 35-34. So have been a couple of tough losses for Warren Powers' Missouri Tigers to start the season, but a big win for Dave McLean. We'll have Notre Dame and Missouri from Perot Field in Columbia two weeks from today here on ABC at 3.30 Eastern Time. 
So the Pitt Panthers are playing the kind of football defensively that Poge Fazio had said they were going to do. They're just going to belly up and take them on. Keith, look at the lineup of the Pittsburgh team. In all of my days, I've never seen a kickoff with everybody lined up inside. Well, let's see if it does anything. The ball is well back in the end zone, so there'll be no return of it. So whatever they had in mind, <laughs> it didn't uh, produce any particular effect as Pat Viancourt kicked it downfield. Nebraska in the third quarter now, defeating Minnesota 21 to nothing. But the Minnesota Gophers with Lou Holtz keeping that ball game fairly decent. Washington defeating Michigan today, and Purdue now at halftime has gone ahead of Miami of Florida 17 to 14. On offense so far for uh, Oklahoma, they've run the ball four times for a minus eight yards and fumbled it away. BYU 14 nothing over Tulsa. That's in the second quarter of play in that game. Danny Bradley hands it inside, and this time there's a little room for Lydell Carr as he comes from the 20 out near the 27. What is the score of the Notre Dame great comeback against Michigan State? I think Notre Dame was down 17 to nothing early in the ball game, maybe the first quarter. West Virginia won. They got 14 points in the first quarter, and then that's all they got. Jim Young's got Army going today, uh, leading Colgate, and a big, big win for the Middies of Navy, 33-30 over North Carolina. And Vanderbilt beat Maryland today by nine. Second down and short four, long three for Oklahoma. Bradley keeps it. He's spun down at the line of scrimmage as John Lewis, a cornerback, had come up to support on the left side and Lewis at 180 pounds a junior from Levittown got his man. There's the defense for Pittsburgh Sapio Quince Atiyah Bushkowski and Dolman Dolman playing with a very sore ankle. Caesar Aldesert outstanding linebacker along with Troy Benson and the secondary for Pittsburgh Lewis Dean Smith and Callahan. It is third down and this time a good four yards for Oklahoma. Bradley's changing the play. Steps back to throw. Swings it out. Pass is complete, but it uh, is caught by Earl Johnson coming out of the backfield. And by the time the ball got to him, Earl was already on his way down. And so they come up short of the first down by about two and a half or three yards. And they'll have to kick it away. So the Panthers leading three to nothing. And the freshman Dante Wiley. And they say Wiley is a heck of an athlete. He can play almost anywhere. Listed as a quarterback, but may see him today as a wide receiver and his returning kicks. Keith, let me mention, Oklahoma's going to have to go deep with a pass before much longer. The quarterbacks are right on the line. Winchester's got a good kick in the air, and Wiley takes it back on the 25 and gets five yards on the return back to the 30 after the 47-yard punt by Winchester of Oklahoma. He's got 5.27 to play in the first quarter, and Pitt leads it 3 to nothing. Well, talking to Foge Fazio, the coach of the Panthers yesterday, I suggested to him maybe it was time to get macho with his game plan. Well, Keith, you must have been watching this practice. That's what our, that's what our game is. We're back to the fronts that we've been playing the last five or six years. We're back to a few of the stunts that take away, as I said before, their fullback play, which is excellent fullback, uh, to try to cause Bradley some problems in his reads. And, of course, uh, be in a position to really whack him once in a while to see if we can cause a fumble, not trying to depend on them to cause the mistakes. We want to cause the mistakes. And the only way you do that is believing in yourself and getting after them. Yep. And they've already caused one and uh, cashed in a field goal on it to take the lead in the ball game. And now the Panthers go to work from their 31 first down with Bailey and Gladman lined up behind Don Jimmy. And Jimmy back, going to throw it, gets it down the middle. He threw it in the crowd, and he's lucky to get it back. Very lucky to get that one back. Well, Pittsburgh changing their strategy. They tried to run the football against Oklahoma, and Oklahoma crowded the line as we look at the Ohio State score. Three to nothing over Washington State. And a first down. Pittsburgh came out, and there's a flag down, but Pittsburgh came out and threw deep on first down. Look Penalty at flag is thrown back on the 24. Your officials today, uh, Thomas Stammert, the referee, Bob Holliday, the umpire, Don Gooman, the headlinesman, Kent Hauk, the line judge, Vince Sigarzi, the field judge, Virgil Deering is the back judge. Defensive face mask, five yards, incidental. Incidental face mask call against Oklahoma moves the football out to the 36, and so the Panthers now are looking at first and five. You want Wiley to... now has come out to a wire flanker spot and for Pittsburgh, five. so they put him in there in a hurry. He's a 200-pounder and stands just over six feet. Don 
and Jimmy back to throw it again. Gets it off in a hurry, and the pass was intended for Wiley, and it was underthrown by Conjimmy. He's quick, Frank. Conjimmy has great quickness because he, he's a good athlete. He works hard on the fast release, and he has had a great sophomore year. Florida leading Tulane. You saw that Kentucky school. Looks like Claver, Jerry Claiborne's got Kentucky organized to start the season. Good happen to a nice guy. Jerry Claiborne was the first coach that I hired when I became a head coach. Second down and five now. Scales has come to a wide receiver position. He was listed as the starting tailback, so he's a multiple position player as well. They had it inside to Gladman. And you see the power of the big freshman from Akron as he hammers his way out to the 45 and a Pittsburgh first down. Good offensive movement by the, the line of scrimmage, but in talking to the coaches, Gladman, number 32, just a freshman, runs low. You can see that he's carried the ball nine times already, runs very low, has good vision, and that's the reason they put him in the lineup. That's the first first down of the ball game by either team. So far, Oklahoma has been totally contained. And Pittsburgh getting the opportunity for its field goal as a result of Lydell Carr's fumble. Oklahoma continues to jump their defense around. Back goes Conjemi to throw. Getting some pressure, looking downfield. Throws for Gladman. The pass is thrown out of bounds incomplete. Andre Johnson back covering for Oklahoma. But Gladman had no chance to catch that football from the very beginning because he was looking back into a bright sun. It was a high lob pass, and before it got halfway to him, it was out of bounds. Casillas, the nose guard, number 92, has a tough time rushing the passer because the center blocks him. Then the guard is free to pick him up, and you can see what a difficult time nose guards have, but he doesn't give up. He finally comes back in and hits the quarterback after the pass. Craig Hayward now is in. He is another freshman out of Passaic, New Jersey, a bigger one, six footer and a hundred, uh, 235 pounds. And can Jimmy back to throw it. Fakes it once, throws it short, passes, drop by number 81, Dexter Edmonds. Oklahoma looks very quick on defense, particularly in their linemen and linebackers. They're not as big as, the, as Pittsburgh, but they have that quickness and they're using it to advantage by going through the gaps and rushing from the outside. I'm a little surprised, though, that Pittsburgh is not te testing the depth of the Oklahoma roster by just pounding away because they are bigger. And that offensive front the Panthers put out there on the field is, is something. Third down and ten. And Jimmy, play action, looks to throw, pressure's on, that's good pursuit. Lobbed over the middle, the pass is caught by number 25, Bill Wallace. But Bill is just over midfield to the Oklahoma 49 and four yards short of the first down. Play action passes aren't usually successful when the other opponents are blitzing the defense. That was the situation, and Jimmy was lucky to get the pass off. And Jellick comes in to punt. Shepard goes deep for Oklahoma. The two punts by Jellick so far today have been 33 and 35 yards. I want to mention again, Oklahoma's going to have to go deep on early downs to back off the second one. It's a very bad punt by Jellick. It was snapped low to him. He fielded it on the bounce, then hurried his kick, and he only kicked it about 15 yards. Why didn't he get it that far? It is a 10-yard punt, and so Oklahoma comes out of it with good field position, first down at their own 39. 3.51 to play in the first quarter. Oklahoma's fourth possession. Their first three, their minus eight on the first one and the kick. Fumbled it away on the second. Gained eight yards on the third before they punted. They've shown pass already in the ball game, and Pittsburgh right now lined up against the wishbone with seven people up front. Go down the sidelines with it. The pass is uh, caught by Buster Rhymes, but he was out of bounds when he came down with it. Or was he? Uh, indicated out of bounds, and he is out of bounds, so it's an incomplete pass. Buster Rhymes is getting covered man to man. Watch him get hit right at the line of scrimmage by Dean number 28. Now he runs right by him. Head Bradley led him to the inside. I doubt if Callahan, the safe man, could make the play. You can see he goes up. He's got to have possession of the ball. Come in bounds with one foot. So obviously chalk. came right on the chalk line. Good call by the fish. So it's second down and 10 Oklahoma at their own 39. Pittsburgh leading 3-0 on a field goal. The defensive team so far on both sides of the ball have dominated. They tried inside with Carr, the freshman fullback. And there's maybe a yard for him, and that's all. Pittsburgh are shooting the gap, going through, trying to penetrate 
Bradley is very slow as we look at the possessions where the Sooners started the ball. You can see what's happened. They've had no offense. But Bradley is so slow with his fake to the fullback that I believe that he's going to get in trouble from the backside. It looks like that uh, he's uh, much slower than Oklahoma teams of the past. And minus one yard now on seven carries on the ground in their offense with 310 to play in the first quarter. Bradley back to throw. Puts one to the sidelines for Lyons. That one he threw too high. He's 5'9 or so, maybe 5'10, where they list him, but I doubt if he's that tall. And uh, you just simply have trouble seeing over the defensive lineman and your own offensive lineman unless you scoot around like Doug Flutie does. And so far, Bradley hasn't been running around too much. He's a good scram on that. We'll see that before the game is over, but the job right now, the Oklahoma coaches, is settling his offensive team down, particularly bad Bradley. Winchester. Good kick. Runs Wiley all the way back to his four. And he's tough. He comes back across the 10 and out to about the 17 before they got him. So it's a 56 yard punt with a little help from the wind and a 12 yard return. ABC Sunday afternoon baseball starts tomorrow. Presentation features the action in the American League. Kansas City and Minnesota tied for the lead with the California Angels just uh, half a game back of them. You'll see either the Twins at Texas or Kansas City against Seattle. And uh, there's the National League today with Chicago uh, jumping out to a 4-0 lead over the Mets and Houston beating San Diego 3-2. And uh, the American League, Toronto, Detroit even. So the clock is just ticking for San Diego and Detroit right now. Here's the pass thrown, incomplete, short. Pass intended for number 24, Matt Stennett. And I should also say, as far as the baseball is concerned, it's just a matter of waiting for the San Diego Padres as well in the National League West. The Oklahoma coaches say that nose guard Casillas, number 92, is their best defensive lineman. Very dedicated, just improving all the time. You can see the effort that he gave to get back and force and Jimmy to release the ball before he was ready. Incomplete pass resulting. John Conjemi now is two out of six in passing for nine yards. Neither offense able to do much so far. That's Mark Bailey at fullback, a senior from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, and the 225-pounder picks up about three, just over three yards as he crosses the 20. A moment now with Tim Brandt. Keith, I just got out of the locker room and I was talking to the Oklahoma trainers. They have gotten the x-rays back on Kevin Murphy. It is not broken, but it is a bad sprain, and they doubt very seriously if he'll be able to play for a while. He's still in a great deal of pain. Well, that's a big loss for them. But so far, the defensive side's held up their share very well. Third down and seven for Pittsburgh, just over the 20. And Jimmy back to throw it again. Wants to go deep down the middle, throws it down the middle, and it is caught. And good for the first down up at the 38-yard line, and that's a heck of a catch by Bill Wallace. Bill Wallace caught 45 passes last year. He doesn't have all that speed, but watch his concentration. The pass has to be absolutely perfect as Rockford was coming from the outside and he aimed very close to breaking it up. Just as perfect play as you can with man-for-man -man curve. Watch Rockford break on the ball, but the pass was perfect. Good concentration. Big first down. And they're sitting up on their 30, uh, 20. Uh, oh, boy, I tell you, it's a hard day. 38-yard line. Can Jimmy goes in the air again, goes deep with it. And overthrows his intended receiver, uh, Casper, by a good five yards. Keith, what we're seeing on Oklahoma defense, the halfbacks challenging the Pittsburgh receivers because Pittsburgh receivers do not have the deep threat. The corner halfbacks of Oklahoma are up close, and on the last pass, they tried to go deep, but the pass went way wide and incomplete. It's second down and 10, Pitt. They're on 38. Stennett back in the lineup now as uh, the offensive coaches are shuffling people in and out of there. They try to run a little delay, and Mark Bailey doesn't really have a chance to get started. They bring him down right at the line of scrimmage. Pittsburgh, I think, has the biggest offensive line I have ever seen in college football. I want to point out that they have three players that weigh 280 or more. That is Fralick, Christie, and Dixon. They average 272. I don't ever remember an offensive team being that big. But they are faced now against, interestingly enough, a much smaller defensive team of Oklahoma. Casillas is the man shaking up on the play for the Sooners. It looks like he'll have to leave the ball game, but he's walking all right. Let's see how he 
got bunged up a little bit on the last I'll tell you play. one thing, Frank, uh, playing nose guard against Pittsburgh, you're going <laughs> to get bunged up. You certainly are. Number 92, just an outstanding football. He's being trapped by number 69, the guard that's coming across. Randy Dixon is trapping him out, and he hit him on the arm and probably strained that shoulder just a little bit. Kind of a funny piece of action on the clock over there. It was down to 110 in the first quarter, and now it's back up to 129. Well, Oklahoma wants to force the punt into the win. <laughs> if they could, of course. Third down and 10 now for Pittsburgh. And Jimmy throwing again, goes down the middle with it, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Wallace, number 25. Key Oklahoma defensive backs are right on top of Wallace and Casper. I think they feel that they have more speed as we look from behind the quarterback. You can see the blocking, the fake. And Jimmy had an outstanding sophomore year. You can see the ball thrown down, but Oklahoma backs are right there, and they've taken a perfect pass for completion. Jellick is back in now, and I'm sure has had a lecture from his coaches about that last punt of 10 yards. This time the snap's a little better, and so is the kick with Shepard coming up. And a fair catch is called by the up man, Sonny Brown, a sophomore defensive back. And Oklahoma goes to work up off its 33. This Oklahoma. Hey, you can line, okay. Let's check in on the condition of Tony Casillas. Keith, you're looking at Tony right now. They have looked at it. Somehow he got a shot with a helmet underneath his chest pad. It is a bruised rib. They're going to try to put a bruised pad on it or a uh, rib pad on it, rather, and get him back into the ball game quickly. Thank you, Tim. Oklahoma needs for him to play and have a good game. They need some offense, too. <laughs> so far, they haven't had any. Bradley rolls it out this time, gets his pass away, and this time it is caught by Buster Rhymes inbounds for a first down up near the 49. He caught that ball in front of Bill Callahan. You can see that Bradley, as Keith had mentioned earlier, is best rolling out. He gets away from... Goldman, the defensive end, and look at the stretch. Six foot four, Rhymes goes to pull it down. And Rhymes was a running back from Miami, Florida, as a freshman. Was ineligible for one year, and he came back and has developed an outstanding wide receiver. You can see what a target he is. A great catch. First, first down of the game for the Sooners. Sitting near the 49, Bradley puts him in motion, pitches the ball back, and there's nothing doing for Earl Johnson. Johnson, if uh, Spencer Tillman were here would be at the fullback position but uh, Tillman is suffering with a hamstring problem to start this season and has not been able to play he missed the opener against Stanford and is not here today. Let's look at the size of the offensive lineman at Oklahoma they're not uh, all that small themselves they don't have 280 pound players but look at the average 270 pounds as Pittsburgh averages 272. Second down and 11 now. Uh, the first quarter's over. So it'll be Oklahoma possessing the ball near midfield as we start period number three with the Pitt Panthers leading three to nothing. He has come back out of the locker room after the x-ray showed negative on his uh, sprained foot. He's come back to the bench to rejoin his teammates, but it does not appear that he's going to be playing the rest of this day. Right now, it is second down, 11 Oklahoma. The ball is at their own 48. They trail 3-0 to Pittsburgh. Roll out by Bradley. The pass is incomplete. And that was close to being interference. The fifth defensive man, number 28, Melvin Dean, arrived very timely, but almost too soon. And I think the figure that jumps out right there, Frank, is that minus two yards rushing for Oklahoma. Well, you can interpret all of these statistics by the fact that both defenses are gambling, taking chances, and until the offense can make them pay for those chances, we're going to see those numbers continue. I look for some big plays in this quarter by both offensive teams. It's third and 11 for Oklahoma. Bradley straight back. Shoots it to the sidelines to Rhymes. He's a yard short of the first down. No, it's Shepard. Derek Shepard, number three, making that catch. And he's a yard and a half, close to two yards, short of the first down. Well, the Shepard family brings back members, Keith. Uh, two brothers played at Oklahoma, were out, had outstanding careers. This is the third Shepard youngster from Odessa, Texas. He took over the kick return job. Uh, rather decisively in the fall training session. Oklahoma is still short of one man on the field. They only have 10 men. Here he comes. When 
Winchester in the punt now, and Wiley is the deep man. Get a little pressure on him. He's trying to kill it deep, obviously. It touches one of the Pittsburgh players. And looks like the Panthers have recovered him. One of the men coming down to help block on the play. It is Oklahoma's ball. Now the officials are all confused. One of them is calling it down and having touched the Pittsburgh player, but uh, I think it touched, I mean, Oklahoma player, but it definitely touched the Pittsburgh player. Number four, I believe, John Lewis is the one that it touched. It appeared to me as the one that it touched. You can see number four right, right there. there. It touched him. Now it is Oklahoma's ball. So it is uh, mistakes on both sides now that are providing scoring opportunities. Oklahoma fumbled it away on Pittsburgh defensive pressure and the Panthers got a field goal and now the mistake by the receiving team for Pittsburgh the ball hitting one of their players and rolling loose and Oklahoma covered it and the Sooners are sitting on the pit five first down and goal. Bradley gives the ball to Johnson and Earl Johnson slashing at the right side is down near the two. Nope. No wishbone. Here's the way a free safety should play on the goal line. Callahan was a strong safety, but he's a tough youngster, the kind you'd like to see play. He's free to hit the corner. You see him come all the way over and make the play and prevent the touchdown by Johnson, number five. Just inside the two-yard line. Second down and goal, Oklahoma. Johnson again with the ball, and he is nailed short of the line of scrimmage by Caesar Aldersert. Oh, Pittsburgh has two outstanding linebackers. Number 87, Al the Search, six foot four, 222. Good speed, good range, and he penetrated something that you should not allow with the offense on the goal line. Let's see where he came to the right of your screen. Number 87, penetrate with a stunt coming right into the area where Oklahoma's favorite play. That's a good stunt right at the favorite play of Oklahoma. Third and goal. Bradley rolls it out. He comes left with it. There's some room on the corner, and it's short of the goal line as Callahan trailed the play all the way across the end zone and kept Steve Sewell out. Well, when you have a free safety who wants to get involved, he is just so valuable on the goal line. He is to hit both option plays. That's his assignment. Read the quarterback. Here's the fake to the fullback. No, I don't want to leave it there. Now I don't want to keep it, so I pitch it. Dean forces the pitch. Number 31 comes and stops him on the one-yard line right here, all the way from the free safety position, wraps up Sewell, number 31, prevents him from going across the goal line. Oklahoma has called timeout on fourth down to make a decision whether or not they're going to try to stick it in the end zone. They only need about a half a yard. Oklahoma is going on fourth and a half yard. And it might even be a short half yard for that man. It looks like it's about a foot for that. Here's where they may miss Spencer Tillman. Bradley over the top. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Bradley just stood up and took a leap. And as he came down, he was broken the plane, and the arms of the men in striped shirts went up. All you have to do is break the plane with the ball. The player doesn't have to get across the goal line. There's no middle linebacker, so Bradley goes over the top. You Clearly over. The ball breaks the plane of the goal line, and that's the automatic touchdown. The play is over as soon as the plane is broken. The good call by the Oklahoma staff because there was no middle linebacker to keep Bradley from going over the top from the quarterback position. Lashar, a sophomore out of uh, Plano, Texas, missed an extra point last week against Stanford. But he's got this one. And with 12 minutes and 59 seconds to play in the first half, Oklahoma has now gone into the lead over Pittsburgh by a score of 7-3. But uh, at this point of the game, neither offensive team has shown very much. The game has been dominated by the defensive people. Well, we've got a lot of pro football, but he has set the whole world on 
foot national football league on fire with success playing for the right man too yes he kind is. of a coach to handle a young quarterback Don Shuley. Dante Wiley is the man in the middle now for uh, Pittsburgh as Oklahoma leads by a score of seven to three and the kickoff is very very short and fielded uh, way up in front by Anthony Brown. So let's check in for a moment with Jim Lampley. Keith, two teams share the number five ranking in the AP poll, both in action right now. Miami trailed 17-14 at the half, now has come back on a Kozar run to take a 21-17 lead in the third quarter. But also fifth-ranked Iowa is trailing at home now against Penn State, 20-10, about 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The most recent Penn State touchdown, a Strang run, and the Nittany Lion defense is stuffing the Iowa offense, which was so impressive a week ago against Iowa State. Back to Keith Jackson. Boy, that's a surprise. Ten point. Penn State lead. This is Congemi rolling out. Shoots his pass downfield. Pass caught beyond the 40 by Tom Johnson. They have in the backfield Craig Hayward and Alan McIntyre now. Congemi rolled it left and suddenly his tight end opened up for him. Experienced at quarterback, throwing a lot of passes, has plenty of a time. He doesn't get rattled. It's his first choice. The fullback was covered. He goes right to Johnson. He's wide open. Johnson makes a good reception as he turns around and cradles the ball in. And Jimmy now four out of ten for 46 yards. First down Panthers. Ball out beyond the 42. Handed off inside to McIntyre. <laughs> Nothing there. Boy, did Donnie Jones, the linebacker, read that draw play. Fake pass and run. The linebacker wasn't fooled. He came across and hit it right at the line of scrimmage. Couldn't have been played any better. Got a black cloud hanging over it. It is Pitt Stadium right now. It sort of blotted out everything. We've had rain showers over the last two days, and we may well have some before this game is done. Casillas is back in at nose guard for Oklahoma now. Second down and 10 for Pittsburgh. They give the ball off to number 34. That's Craig Hayward. He's that 235-pound freshman out of Passaic, New Jersey. And again, the Oklahoma defensive people going to the ball, led by Richard Reed, the sophomore out of Fort Worth. Richard Reed at left tackle, and Dennis Reed at left end, and uh, Stan Berry, strong safety, all right into that play. The left side of the line whipped the blockers, went right to the play, and gang tackled. Third down and nine now, and Pittsburgh has failed to pick up any yardage of any consequence on the last three runs. Third down and long. It is almost intercepted. The pass was intended for Craig Hayward and Dante Jones, the freshman out of Dallas, the weak side linebacker, almost had himself a touchdown. When the linebackers back up in the zone and get a good read on the quarterback and get a break on the ball, you feel like that's a plus. You don't get that very often, but Jones made a perfect play and came close to the interception and touchdown. Chris Jellick not having a very good day punting so far. His longest has been 35 yards, his shortest 10. Snap is a little high this time. Gets it out of there. And up comes Shepard. And down he goes at the 20. Could not get away from number 46 for Pittsburgh. Downfield coverage by Darnell Stone. 39 yard punt. You can see the murky sky over Pitt Stadium. Talking yesterday with Barry Switzer, we talked about this speed versus muscle matchup. Well, we do run good. We've got good speed, uh, but we've always had pretty good speed. We, our kids are just uh, the kids we recruit in our area of the country can run. We don't have the big uh, uh, Pittsburgh lineman or the lineman of the East that you see. And really, there is a difference in the areas of the country producing that quality of an athlete. And ours are more kind of lean type guys, or runners, racers, and uh, possibly the uh, most of the Eastern schools. Racers haven't been on the loose in the Oklahoma offense. And they break the bone a little bit in this one as they shuffle around and go to the other way, putting Johnson up into that uh, flanker or slot position now. Bradley back, gets it away quickly to the sideline. Himes, Buster had the ball in his hands when he went down, so it will go down as a completed pass with John Lewis laying a lick on him. Oklahoma still are going to have to roll out and go deep. You can see penalty Ryan. Back. Yes, we do have a penalty play. You can see Ryan's on the isolation going down. He really doesn't push him, doesn't confuse, doesn't deceive the defensive halfback who's going to come up and be right there on him, number four, uh, uh, Jones. Penalties against Oklahoma. It looked like it was either illegal use of the hands or holding. 
Oklahoma is still going to have to go deep. Pittsburgh's defense is right up on the line of scrimmage. Virtually all 11 men in position to tackle very close to the line if the ball is a running play. Well, we're marking off the penalty here and getting definition from referee Tom Thamert. Illegal use of the hands against the offense. First down. Five-yard penalty. Thomas Hearns has TKO'd Fred Hutchings in the third round of their fight today. So the hitman successful in his title defense. And it's first down and 15 now for the Oklahoma Sooners. Triple and it's a triple wing this time. First time we've seen the formation. And they go right up the middle with a pullback car. And Carr, long-legged, pops it out to about the 28. Nebraska rolling now over Minnesota, 31-7. to That's a far cry from last year's 84-21 route. And Penn State now getting a bit more of a contest from Iowa in the fourth quarter. With Iowa coming back to score and BYU handling Tulsa. Washington State now... No, no. Falling well back of Ohio State, 17-0. The Buckeyes had a tough opener against the Pac-10 team, Oregon State, but they're handling the Cougars pretty well today. Inside, they go to Carr, trying for the first down. On second down and the short three. And he's going to be a yard short of his first down as Tim Quince, a senior from Tom's River, New Jersey, makes the tackle for Pittsburgh. Napoleon McCallum. You've seen him, Frank, the Navy oh, yes. running back. He's at Danny. In fact, Arkansas plays Navy next week, don't they? No, two weeks from that. Two weeks. Yes. The Navy has, uh, has a big win for the Naval Academy. You know, Bo Coppedge feels pretty good after that, the athletic director and a good friend of Keith and mine. Third down and a yard for Oklahoma. They go to the fullback, and he's got the first down. He's out to about the 32. Carr just rolling over the right side. And that time, he got some solid. As a matter of fact, the right side of the Oklahoma line looks to me like is where they're going to have to go with it because Pickett and Dillingham are carrying their burden pretty well. Well, Pickett was one of the finest recruit, uh, high school players in all of the South. He weighs 270 and started as a freshman last year, the only true freshman to start for Oklahoma. So from the 32 now, the Sooners get a little bit of breathing room. They lead 7-3 to three in the ball game, and they've got Sewell in motion. Mark, uh, Bradley comes down the line with it, pitches it back. Johnson is... Wallop, a yard short of the line of scrimmage. Chris Dolman, the senior out of York, Pennsylvania, and Aldersert, the senior from Pittsburgh. And I guess they're, if you were going to start looking around the country <laughs> to pick your all collegiate uh, defensive team, I think I might want those two guys on my side. Both of them just know, know how to close to the ball. Back Dolman played it perfect, and Aldersert, the linebacker, did ignore the fullback fake and came outside as an extra man and just smothered the play. Couldn't have been played any better. Trying to remember back to Chris Dolman's freshman year, I think it was in that South Carolina game that he surfaced as an outstanding player. Wolf, he was a war horse that day. It's second down, 11 now for Oklahoma, and the handoff to the fullback looked like it was in slow motion. It was a very slow developing play, no mystery in it, no deception in it, and Pittsburgh just buried it. Pittsburgh, uh, the defensive front, uh, continue to confuse the blocking and the reading. As uh, Coach Fazio said, confuse the reading of the triple option is the key to stopping it, and that's what's happening so far. Bradley is heading off to the wrong man. I'll tell you one thing. You go back through the years while Foge was here first as the defensive coach for Pittsburgh, and uh, his defensive people have always played the wishbone pretty well. They're big and strong and penetrate. That's the key to stopping the wishbone. Bradley back. It's thrown high to the sidelines, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Derek Shepard, and Derek at 5'11 just couldn't get that high. And so the Pitt defense has done its job again. They've done their job. I think the Pitt offense is going to loosen up. The Oklahoma defense continue to gamble. Uh, if you don't burn them, you're going to be in for a long afternoon. And Pittsburgh has been very, very conservative, much more than I anticipated, running on third down and uh, all of these things. I think they'll open up this quarter with uh, Jimmy, their quarterback. Winchester now is going to have a little wind against him. Got most of it. It's going to be short of, of Dante Wiley. Wiley had gone 46 yards back from the line of scrimmage, and he had no chance to catch that football. Had to let it roll. Of course, they play on the artificial surface here at Pitt Stadium. And once the ball gets to rolling, it rolls a heck of a long way. It rolled all the way back to the 11-yard line. 
Well, next Saturday, then we won't have any college football for you here on ABC, but we sure do have a lot of fist fights and uh, the Fifth Avenue Mile. I'll be in Monaco as uh, Richie Sandoval defends his WBA Bantamweight Championship against Edgar Roman. Then we go from Monaco to New York for the Fifth Avenue Mile Special. And then ABC's Wide World of Sports will come back to Monte Carlo for Donald Curry's uh, WBA welterweight defense against Nino LaRocca. Keith, let me just mention uh, the safety man's a freshman. He lined up the same distance from the ball that he did in the first quarter when Oklahoma was kicking with the win. A fundamental mistake on Pittsburgh Park. And Jimmy rolls out, lobs it out here in the, the hands of number 21, Mark Bailey, the fullback, swinging out of the backfield. And Bailey could not get it turned up field after making the catch, so the pickup is seven yards, second down and three coming. Bennett, the flanker, had gone deep on that play and was behind the secondary Johnson of Oklahoma for the touchdown. Just couldn't get the ball to him. They've got Stennett wide to the top of the picture, but run the football. Trying for the first down, and they won't get it on that play as Chuck Scales lined up. A sophomore out of West Mifflin lining up a tailback and carrying the ball. Clock showing a little more than seven minutes to play in the first half and Oklahoma leading seven to three. And it was mistakes by both offensive teams in the case of uh, Oklahoma making its mistake a fumble and Pitt cashed in for the field goal 37 yarder and then uh, a punt hit one of the Pitt players and Oklahoma recovered it on the Pitt five and scored on fourth down. There's penetration on the left side by number 96 Richard Reed but it's a question of whether or not uh, the Bob Brown the right guard for Pitt had made a move on the offensive front. It was a move by no nope, wasn't Brown. It was Reed trying to anticipate. I think that uh, from Jimmy changed the snap count went up to a long snap count Oklahoma couldn't hold and charge that's the that second ball. Encroachment, offense, third down. That's only the second conversion on third down by either team in this ball game. Two out of eight for Pittsburgh. He said third down, but uh, looks to me like it's first down. It is first down. <laughs> ball up on the 25. And Jimmy throwing on the first down. Oh, look at that. Dante Jones had the ball right on his numbers. It was thrown right into his chest, and he was so startled by it. The pit receiver goes flashing in front of him. The ball is thrown so hard by Ken Jimmy that the pit man never saw it, and Jones couldn't hold it. Jones uh, is coming up into the ball, and obviously the ball goes right by the receiver. Uh, scales and uh, Jones didn't see it Keith I think he was screamed from and all of a sudden it came in front of him and he couldn't hold it. he's been close to scoring two touchdowns on that reception. been around the football that linebacker supposed to do second down and 10 they thought Scales wide and Scales finds some daylight in the first down after the 42 that's what I've been expecting the Oklahoma defense has been penetrating running themselves up the field and on this play on the right of your screen Oklahoma runs itself right out of play allowing an opening to scale number 22 you can see how open it is in the secondary before Stansberry number 19 brings him down scales look pretty pretty quick pretty slippery once he got out of the open field Panthers on the first down Jimmy gives that ball to Wiley Wiley coming around from the wide receiver position picks up about five yards before the Oklahoma defense led by Jim Rockford gets him ran a long way to get five well against Oklahoma reverse plays are usually uh, pretty good percentage plays Oklahoma's so fast they pursue on the initial direction of the play and when the reverse comes but Rockford the cornerback stayed at home and made the play Here's the rushing yard so far, very below what we expect. Five minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first half. Second down, call it four and a half. And Jimmy hands it inside. And Scales this time is going to lose about a half a yard on the carry as Brian Bosworth, the freshman out of Irving, Texas, was in there to get him. No wonder the coaches are so high on Bosworth. Another outstanding play. Read the play called and penetrated close to it held him for no gain as we look at third and four coming up close to third and five now pass 
Pitch is away intended for the tight end Tom Johnson, but Keith Stanberry faked movement toward the line of scrimmage and then dropped back into that short zone anticipating the tight end. And the pass was overthrown. So it brings up fourth down and Pitt once more will have to go to the punt. Harry Switzer has said that Stan Bear is the best strong safety in the Big 8 conference and he's had an outstanding game so far. In fact, both defenses are dominating play. Stan Bear has started at that position four consecutive years. Gets pretty cagey about that time. Derek Shepard. Deep. Billick, one out of the kick. Now he's looking for some help back there and he is caught and he is dropped at the Oklahoma 49. He's going to be short of the first down by one yard. Mike Aljo was the man that penetrated and forced him to circle. He had plenty of time and plenty of room to kick the ball. I don't know. Let's look at it. It was a perfect snap. I don't know what uh, caused him to think someone was uh, going to block it. Uh, only coming from the outside could not have uh, interfered with the kick. He had time to kick it. He could have thrown an incomplete pass down the field. No, he couldn't because that had been lost it down, too. That had been lost it down. Yeah. It is Oklahoma's ball. He's short of the first down. You can see that, but it wasn't short by a yard. It was short by a foot. So Jellick almost turned a bad play into a good play. But if, in fact, it was not designed and not called, it was a poor piece of judgment on his part, and Oklahoma gets the ball first down at their own 48. A little less than five minutes to play in the first half. Seven to three, Oklahoma. Sooners go to work. First down at the 48 after that mistake by Jellick. With the wind at his back, he did not get the kick away. And came up a foot short of first down on his scramble. This is Lydell Carr, the fullback, sliding around the corner. And going out of bounds after picking up close to seven yards on the carry. Brought down by Lorenzo Freeman and Bill Callahan. Plays at Oklahoma are running now. Auxiliary offense away from the wishbone. And I think most coaches would say as we got another Oklahoma player down on the field, Keith. You got Aldersert getting up very slowly, too. Caesar has lost his shoe and uh, it's kind of gimpy getting up, but the Oklahoma man is down. Look at Johnson, isn't it? Looks like Earl Johnson, number five. That would really be a damaging blow to Oklahoma. And talking to their coaches, they are already hampered at, uh, at uh, running back with Tillman, their great runner, not playing. I talked with Pitt's All-American offensive tackle Bill Freilich about the mood of the Pitt team going into this game against Oklahoma. Well, we've had two weeks off, and we had a lot of practice coming in for this game. And I think everybody has tried to light a fire under each other, and I think it's happened in practice. We had a great week of practice. All we got to do is go out and play with confidence and execute, and the rest will take care of itself, and I think it's going to happen more. But so far, it has been a defensive ball game. Oklahoma 7 to 3 over Pitt. Both teams scoring coming from mistakes by the other side. Patrick Collins is now in replacing Earl Johnson. Collins is a freshman, 175 pounder out of Tulsa. Second down and three for Oklahoma. And they send the fullback Carr into the middle, and Carr spins his way to the Pittsburgh 40, and he has a first down for the Oklahoma Sooners. Steve Apke, a sophomore out of Cincinnati, brought him down. First real opening we've seen in the pit defense by uh, blocking the offensive Oklahoma line. Uh, Carr had a nice hole for the first down. Well, you mentioned earlier that Pittsburgh was plugging the gaps or shooting the gaps, but you got to, and running the wishbone, the secret to that, of course, is finding the gap they haven't plugged. That's sometimes yeah. hard to do. <laughs> they haven't done it much yet. Well, Carr's getting a full day's work as the big guy has it again and just keeps on thundering downfield and falls across the 30. And he may have another Oklahoma first down. He's now carried the ball 12 times and picked up 53 yards. The only mark against him so far, he fumbled it away one time, which led to Pittsburgh's field goal. Oklahoma seemed to have taken the position. We're going to run right at him. And they've run the fullback three straight times, and uh, Carr has done well coming in behind. As Keith mentioned early, uh, the offensive right side of the line, Pickett and Dillingham are getting the job done. In the first quarter, there were minus .2 yards per rushing carry, but in the second quarter, to give you an idea of how things are starting to change a little bit now, 
The Oklahoma Sooners are averaging four and a half yards per rush. That's a big difference. One, you move the chains, the other, you don't. <laughs> Neither team able to light up the scoreboard very much so far. And they stay when you got something going for you, stay with it, I guess. Carr again carries the ball. He's a rangy fellow at 195 pounds, and he picks up about three on that carry to make it second down and seven. That's Bold Fazio right there. Stop me, number Bodes is a very popular coach with his players and with his fans. A good uh, coach, bright, organizes his situations well, good teacher. Everybody likes it. Second and seven. From the pit, 27. Bradley on that reverse to Buster Rhymes. Rhymes, a former running back, has three blockers in front of him. He's got a crack. He's close. And down at the one. John Lewis saved it for Pitt. Oh, when I was trying to defense the wishbone, I hated for the team to run that reverse. You get so anxious to chase the quarterbacks, all three backs going, and then you pitch the ball back to Rhymes, number four, the wide receiver. He juggles it, but you've got three and four blockers out in front of you. It's just a matter of him choosing which way to cut. He finally gets knocked down after 26 yards on the one-yard line. First and goal, Oklahoma on the pit one. Bradley keeps it, dive. Didn't get there. They're going to mark him just short. That time, there was somebody in the middle to knock him back. Defensive lineman, submarine, linebackers come over the top. I would guess that would be Callahan. Got up close this time, number 31. Safety man. Second down and goal. I mentioned they missed... Tillman on these goal line plays a while ago. Tillman has that capacity for going over the top. Great leaper. Same play, Bradley. Same result. Short. Unless they fight through the stack and find him. It's a touchdown. They found him on the bottom. And he was across the goal line. Keith, I was surprised that, uh, that they didn't give an earlier signal, particularly the umpire was right there. And he uh, sometimes makes that call because he can see it better than the wide men. Good job, TJ. Right, let's look well, I guess they wanted to make sure he had possession when they finally fetched him out from under that stack of humanity. He had the ball across the goal line, and Oklahoma's moved out to a 13-3 lead over Pitt. Bradley scored uh, both touchdowns for the Sooners. Leshar's in for the extra point kick, and it's good. So you've got a minute and 54 seconds now to play in the first half, and this is the first time in the ball game that either team has really put any kind of a drive together as the Sooners go 52 yards for the touchdown, and here's Tim Brent. Thanks, Keith. We were just talking to Earl Johnson, the running back for Oklahoma. He took a shot right on that knee. The injured part of the knee is the inside. All they're saying now is that it's a sprain, but they doubt very seriously that he'll be back the rest of the day. But it is a knee injury. They are still working on it. Oh, boy. We saw one of those last week uh, in Alabama losing its great running back, Good, And Boston College, uh, with Alabama unable to generate any offense in the second half when Good left, they wound up losing the ball game uh, to Boston College 38-31 and come right back this week and lose at Georgia Tech 16-6. We'll have the halftime report with Jim and Vino. We'll have the fit van, and we'll talk to the two coaches. So Oklahoma uses three minutes and two seconds to go 52 yards on seven plays for the 14 to three lead. And uh, both scores coming after Pittsburgh mistakes. Pittsburgh mistakes, that's exactly right. This kickoff is well back into the end zone, and Wiley will put it down, and Pitt will go to work first down up on the 20. Keith, we have 154 to play, and. Pittsburgh, of course, will come out throwing the ball. They've got to be careful. They shouldn't get reckless. Be sure that they throw safe passes, but they need to generate some offense right now and maybe get something on the scoreboard if they possibly can. Well, they need some something uh, to take with them to the clubhouse at halftime yes. to, jack, to jack them up a little bit because right now the offense has been unproductive. And the offense didn't do anything last year. Both last two weeks ago, both touchdowns against Brigham Young were set up by the defense. And Jimmy on first down, some pressure on him, and they get him behind the line of scrimmage, back on the, uh, near the 15-yard line, a five-yard loss on the play. Penetration was by Richard Reed. 
Reed is a surprise starter. He's coming in the ball game for Tuffle. Tuffle was an offensive tackle, moved the defense, had a pretty good game last week. But Reed has been outstanding. Swing pass is thrown out to Mark Bailey coming out of the backfield, and Bailey gets up across the 21. So they'll be looking at third down at about eight and a half. And Pittsburgh's going to have to be very careful here. Third and long. Oklahoma will be laying back, trying to play for the pass, and hopefully pull off an interception. Clock running at a minute ten to go in the first half. Now we have one of the officials coming in to stop it. Clock hadn't moved very much, Keith. I don't know what's wrong with that clock. I believe it's been jumping around. It was less than a minute a few, minutes, a few seconds ago. Well, they come to the sidelines now to check with the official who is is the clock operator. Actually, I thought the uh, the receiver went out of bounds. He did go out of bounds. And the clock kept running for a time. So if anything, I think they owe Pittsburgh some uh, few seconds. But uh, the referee, Thamert, now has come to the pit side, and he's now going to the Oklahoma side. So they want to clarify the clock situation. Well, there's 124 when they started this series, and they've run two plays, and only 13 seconds have been rolled off. No, I didn't hear what the referee said. Yeah, I think he, they owed Pittsburgh some seconds, and I believe that's what he said. Run it to 118. Still, it's third and long, and Oklahoma will widen their defense, deepen their linebackers, ignore the run, and play for the interception. Stop well, the deep pass. Both teams have uh, three. Uh, well, Pitt has three timeouts remaining. Oklahoma has two. They spent one. And Jimmy back getting pressure. They've got a hand on him. They've got him locked down, and it was Daryl Reed, defensive end, number 40, that pressured him first, and then Tony Casillas came in to make the tackle. And they get him back on the 15. Casillas, number 92, right over the middle, uses that little swim technique, getting inside the center. And on the left of your screen, you'll see Reed force to Jimmy to come inside, right into the nose guard. Casillas and makes the play. So Oklahoma's going to get the football. And if they handle it all right, they'll get good field position at 107 to play in the first half. And the Sooners leading 14 to 3. Jellick has not had a big day punting. In fact, the last time he, he was back to punt, he got a, a flush of pressure and uh, he raced away from uh, the pressure. And instead of going ahead and kicking the ball, he tried to run it. He came up short and Oklahoma took it down the field 52 yards for the second touchdown. Well, Nebraska ranked number one, winning today. Clemson's not playing. Michigan was defeated by Washington. Texas plays Auburn tonight. Miami is winning. Iowa losing. UCLA plays Long Beach later. BYU winning. Ohio State winning. And Boston College doesn't play. They play North Carolina next week. And then they have two more weeks off before they play again. Kind of an unusual schedule resulting from the movement of one of their games to a later time in the year. So Jellick standing back on his one figures to hit it up around the five and Shepard is waiting back inside the uh, Oklahoma 45. Jellick gets it out and Shepard coming up on the move. He's going to try to go with it. Gets through the first wave and he is caught and brought down at the Pittsburgh 37 yard line. A 34 yard punt and 11 yard return. Oklahoma now with 57 seconds on the clock and one timeout remaining. And Oklahoma will be going into the wind should they get in field goal range. And a pretty well, the wind seems to have died down a little bit. Sun comes out for just the moment here at Pitt Stadium. Meanwhile, let's see Oklahoma's campus. Commenting earlier on the fact that there's a goodly amount of pressure on Oklahoma coach Barry Switzer to produce a winning season. They needed a win over Texas and they'd like one over Nebraska. But you get wins over those two, it's, it's pretty tough. But they've got a big fundraising thing going on at Oklahoma, some $60 million campaign. They, even though uh, the income for college football is on the downward swing this year after all the legal machinations, uh, they still see it as, I guess, the most viable merchandising tool they've got going when it comes to raising money for a university. So there's that pressure as well. And they're right now leading Pittsburgh 14-3 and sitting in pretty good shape as Bradley pops out of the pack. And Danny Bradley, who's a fine scrambler, gets inside the 25 and down to about the 23 for an Oklahoma first down. 
That stops the clock while they move the change with 50 seconds. It wasn't a fake, pay, a fake uh, quarterback draw, but it looked like it. Bradley just ducked right up inside when he saw a crack. And they're going without a huddle now, trying to save as much time. They have no timeouts remaining. Bradley straight back, gets it away in a hurry. Buster Rhymes catches it and then loses it as he falls down on the 10. He had it for just a moment, but could not come down with it. Ryan's going to turn right inside. Good little safe pass. The ball is a little bit high. He tries to cradle it and pull it in, but he never really got the handle, and he fumbled even before he hit the ground. Incomplete. Shepard in, and uh, Rhymes out now. Second down in 10, Oklahoma. The ball at the fit 23, and you've got 42 seconds to play. No timeout, remember, for the Sooners. They spent them all. checking off and I think he burned up the clock one thing that the coaching staff at Oklahoma were concerned about was that the, using so many audibles this year was giving Bradley a little bit of a problem he didn't use them last year all he had to do was execute the option and a few passes now with the using audibles possession type passing running the triple option takes a lot a lot of practice ball. And work. Delay the game offense second down Ball comes back to the 28 now. Second down and 15. It might prove to be a costly mistake there because in the back that field goal unit up quite a bit. And he's looking around, checking his people again. Straight back, short drop, quick sideline pattern thrown to 33 Patrick Collins. And Collins is back and out of bounds at the 22. Stopping the clock with 30 eight seconds to play this is entirely different Oklahoma offense than we've seen in the past Mac Brown as we see Penn State beat our 20 to 17 Mac Brown the new offensive coach giving him an auxiliary offense to use in these type situations third down and eight all just inside the 22 Gets it down the middle. Pass is caught by Shepard. Shepard is loose and touchdown Oklahoma. He got away from Bill Callahan. He's hurt. What an effort Shepard made to put the ball in the end zone. Well, they've lost Johnson. They don't have Tillman. And uh, Casillas is banged up. Kevin Murphy is sidelined with a badly sprained foot. And now Shepard, after this great effort, is down on the field. You see what a tremendous athlete he is. Jumps high to catch the ball. Defensive halfback Dean misses him. And then Callahan, number 31, couldn't prevent him oh, from Oh, I see what it was. Uh, Pitt, that Pitt player got there as he was rolling down. And he took a knee right in the stomach. Well, that was a big change up. Oklahoma scoring two touchdowns right here in the end of the second quarter. Let's see the left knee of uh, who is that? Uh, I can't tell who it is. Left knee hits Shepard, seems to hit Shepard right in the stomach. Probably knocked the wind out of him, and the ball was right there also. But I believe he's going to be all right. Well, he's as tough as the other Shepard. All good athletes. Very good athlete, good quickness, good speed. So the Oklahoma Sooners now making it big at halftime, leading 20 to 3, and they'll come in for the extra point to make it 21. And 31 seconds to play in the first half. Danny Bradley said the passing game might shock Pittsburgh. I think it probably has. The extra point kick is good. And so it's now 21-3 coming up on halftime. Oklahoma leads. And here's a look at the Pitt campus. Hey, pretty. As you? Does me. I thought this would be a, one of those kind of battles that might go down to the. Of course, it may still go down to the last minute. But the second quarter has been almost the total property of Oklahoma, Frank. They've run for 92 yards in the second quarter after being minus two in the first. 
They picked up 39 yards through the air in the second quarter. And the field, the field position was set up by mistakes of the and a poor kick, uh, the last one. Leshard knocks it down to the goal line, to the two-yard line, where it is picked up by Anthony Brown for the Panthers. Brown gets a pretty good return, comes out across the 25 to about the 26. Pittsburgh now, let's see, the Panthers have three timeouts remaining, but the time on the clock is precious little, only 26 seconds. Well, Pittsburgh gambled with a minute and 20 seconds to play to go in their two-minute offense. They couldn't move it. They got a short kick. Uh, Shepard made a nice return and put him in, put Oklahoma in good position. They took it in for the third touchdown. That's the chance you take when you found a two-minute offense. John can Jimmy to throw it. Pass is overthrown and incomplete intended for Bill Wallace. And Jimmy has lost a lot of his poise that he had last year, and I think the Oklahoma rush is the reason. I, I am really impressed with the three and four men rush that is putting uh, good pressure on the Pittsburgh quarterback. And Jimmy is now six out of 16 in the first half, and the yardage you see there of 60. It's not a winning pace. And that's way below what he did last year and in the first ball game. Casper has not seen the ball, the flanker for Pittsburgh. He's to the bottom of the picture. And Jimmy looks into that bright sun trying to find somebody to throw it to, but there is nobody to throw it to. And furthermore, he can't get out of bounds. As Bosworth, a 230-pound linebacker, ran him down. Bosworth is a fine football player. We are repeating. Coaches think he's going to be one of the best. And the first half is over, and you've got some hoops from the home folks at Pittsburgh as the Oklahoma Sooners lead the Panthers by a score of 21 to 3. Now here's Tim Brandt with Coach Barry Switzer. All right, Keith. Now you had some problems offensively getting the bone going there in the first quarter. It looked like they were confusing the read a little bit, but then you went past and well, it's productive. Well, Tim, we uh, two pretty good defensive football teams, I think, and uh, we we knew they'd play a hard front. We're going to throw the football. That's what we did the last two drives. We looked pretty good, the uh, two 50-yard drives to score. I like their two-minute offense. Frank Rawls, we never had a two-minute <laughs> offense at Oklahoma before. Barry, it's good to see you smile, but you've got to be concerned now. Oh, with a couple yeah. of the injuries, yeah. you got Kevin Murphy, Earl Johnson's hurt. Well, I, and it's Tillman's at home. I've got two freshmen starting my back. Field, so we're beat up football team. Afternoon. Defensively now, you've really put a lot of good pressure on Jimmy, but you have had some problems now. Getting back here, I think Dante's had the ball twice yeah. in his hands and dropped it. Tulaski's got a great field position, but we hope we got to play defense in the second half like we have the first half. Okay, good luck, Barry. Keep them going. All right, so we'll be back with the halftime activities here at Pitt Stadium after this message and a word from your local stations. 21 Pittsburgh three and the Boo Birds were out when the Pitt football team left at halftime and uh, this time when Pitt starts to come back on the field there is a scattering of applause but the second quarter was the sole property of the Oklahoma Sooners Frank and the Pitt offense just hasn't done a thing. I couldn't understand what happened to the to the Pitt offense Oklahoma's speed and quickness has dominated uh, that, that side of the ball. Oh, uh, Pittsburgh has got to find some way to burn Oklahoma in their gambling defenses. Otherwise, they're not going to do anything offensively. Well, now, they only ran behind Freilich, their All-American tackle, six times in that first half. What's the matter with just putting a hat on everybody and knocking them down and, and, and crunching the ball down the field? That's a good strategy. I think what stops them from doing it, Keith, is a freshman tailback. They're not sure who is their tailback right now, and unless you've got a good tailback, the high formation is not a good formation to be in. So we are at 21-3 with Oklahoma now starting to take control of the football in the first few minutes of this second half will be very important for the Panthers. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet with the Oklahoma will get the football to start the second half. Lioncourt kicks off the pit. Rhymes and Shepard are deep. And it's Shepard two yards, three yards deep in the end zone, and he'll put it down. It'll be Oklahoma at the 20. Here's Tim Brandt. Keith, I just talked to Pitt head coach Bo Fazio. He is really upset with his ball club. They're making mistakes. They're killing themselves. He says he wants them to go back to what they were doing against BYU and execute. He says they can beat this club. He says they can execute on defense. They have 81 yards, total offense. He says that's not acceptable. He wants his team to come out. If they do that, they maintain their composure. He really strongly believes that they're going to beat Oklahoma. Well, he's got a fair mountain to climb, but we'll see. Very steep now. Oklahoma first down at its 20. 
with Bradley. Back to throw on the first down play. Goes to the sideline. Buster Rhymes. Rhymes can't hold on to the football up on the 28 as it squirts away from him. That's an awkward position for a receiver to be in. Defensively for Pitt. Dolman, 245. Buschkowski, 255, a tackle. A TA, 240 in the nose guard. Quince, a tackle, 250. And Bill Sapio, the other end, 220. The linebackers are uh, Al Desert, 225, 6'4", a great player. Troy Benson, 6'2", 225. Even the secondary in a minute as Bradley turns and hands the football off to Patrick Collins. And they stuff him short of the line of scrimmage by a yard, it appears. The secondary is John Lewis, 180-pounder uh, at corner. The other corner is Melvin Dean, 175-pounder. And the safeties are... Reggie Smith, the strong safety, 195, and Bill Callahan, the free safety, also 195. Ball is setting now on the 19-yard line now, and it's third down and 11 for Oklahoma. So they've tried two running plays, and nothing has come up. A uh, passing play, rather, and then a running play. Danny Bradley on a deep drop. A lot of pressure on him, ducks away from it, gets outside, and he's got a first down as he tiptoes out of bounds at the 32. Well, that's the Danny Bradley we've seen in times past. What a jitterbug Bradley is. Five foot nine, 185 pounds. Two men from Pittsburgh had him for a loss. Look at the right of you, first the left of your screen. Now he dodges it. Uh, a couple Smith. of, uh, yes, that was Smith, and then sprints down the boundary, keeps his foot in bounds, and makes the first down. What a play. Got all of that without contact, too. Didn't pay for it. First down, Oklahoma, at their own 32, leading 21 to 3, and Bradley again on that quick drop goes outside. Shepard makes the catch, and look at this. He had only one more step to get through those last two defenders, and I don't know if anybody in this county would have caught Shepard, but they do get him down. But he's, uh, he's got another first down for Oklahoma. A different Oklahoma offense throwing the quick out pass with his one-on-one -on -one coverage on first down. Shepard is quick. He's a good runner. You can see him do a little sidestep, and Dean goes to the ground. A couple other... Pittsburgh Panthers miss him, and as Keith mentioned, only one man stopped him from going a long distance. Now 43 yards on three catches for Shepard. He scored one touchdown. First down Sooners. Ball at their 43. Bradley going down the line with it. Going to keep it. This is the kind of stuff that works well against the Stanford Cardinal in the opening game last week when Bradley carried the ball 30 times for 108 yards. This is the offensive unit that Oklahoma started the ball game with, excepting, of course, Earl Johnson, who was hurt, took a knee in the stomach. But it, it's Collins now in at that uh, left halfback position with uh, Sewell, Carr, Carr the fullback, and Buster Rhymes, the wide receiver, alternating at times with Darrell Shepard. And namesake up there at the top, he has not caught the ball today. In fact, he has not seen the ball. First down, Oklahoma on the pit side at the Panthers 42 now. As the Sooners come out moving the ball, this is Carr, the fullback, into the middle. And he gets maybe two, where Tony Woods, a sophomore out of Newark, New Jersey, brings him down. In the second quarter, to give you some idea of how this ball game turned, OU outrushed Pitt 92 to 12, out past Pitt 37 to 34, and out first down them 6 to 3. That's how they got on top. But the two of the three scores by Oakland, actually all three of the Oklahoma yeah. touchdowns resulted from either short kicks or mistakes by Pittsburgh. Right now, the Sooners are chewing on the Panther defense. Call it second down and nine. Bradley pitches that ball outside. Ball is dropped by Sewell, and Sewell can't get back to it, and Pittsburgh's got it. And so the Sooners return the favor. They make another mistake, and the Panthers pounce on it at midfield. Ta a Tim Quince on the loose football. The what? pitch to him was behind him. Watch the penetration, how slow Bradley is after the fake. But you see number 35, Haywood, coming in from the cornerback position, gets penetration. The pitch was behind, as Keith mentioned, and is on the ground for the recovery by the Panthers. Big break, something they had to have if they were going to get back in this ball game. Well, in that particular kind of a play, Frank, there's nobody trailing offensively to get the ball. If it's on the ground, the defense has a very good chance to get it, and they did. And Jimmy's going to go to the air. 
deep down the sidelines, thrown out of bounds, incomplete. Oh, and the Pittsburgh Panthers are yelling interference by the defensive halfback for safety Brown. He gave him a good push, and the ball was in the air. Gave the receiver a good push. And official did not see it. It was intended for Gladman coming out of the backfield, but that is a long circling route for somebody coming out of the backfield, and Jimmy hung that thing up there like a big hot air balloon. What uh, Pittsburgh is trying to do is get the... You can see that the defensive back uh, office receiver, Gladman, has been pushed out of bounds, but you, uh, what they're trying to do is get the back in out of the backfield deep. Deep drop this time by Jimmy on second down and 10. Throw short to Wallace. Wallace is caught and dropped at the Oklahoma 46. So they're going to be looking at uh, third down and about three. Kevin Murphy is out of off the field now with an injured uh, foot. Troy Johnson playing in place of him. Tommy Flemings is a big tackle, 255. Casillas, the nose guard, 270. Richard Reed had a big first half, 240-pound tackle. And Darrell Reed, 220-pound defensive end. Dante Jones, good first half at linebacker, a freshman. And Brian Bosworth, another freshman at the other linebacker spot. Boy, I tell you, they're young. Look out, down the road. Third down, call it four for uh, Pitt. Quick pop out here for Wallace. He gets away. Bill Wallace shook off an Oklahoma defender and Dottie Jones the linebacker finally runs him out of bounds. You're going to see Sonny Brown out here old Wallace number 25 just a little hit pass he gets the ball the receiver gets the ball in time to give a little move Brown misses the play Jones finally runs him out of bounds otherwise it would have been a touchdown. First down Pittsburgh the ball at the Oklahoma 28. So the Panthers trying to mount a comeback here in their first possession of the second half and this possession is very important. Gun Jimmy looking to pass can't do it. Runs down just short of the 25. The Oklahoma secondary is Andre Johnson a freshman out of Houston. Uh, Jim Rockford is a senior from Illinois at the other corner. The safety is Keith Stanbury. Keith is a senior, and Sonny Brown is a sophomore. The pit offense, the same unit that started the ball game. Ball is just short of the 25. We're at second down. Call it eight for the Panthers. protection lobs it up for Wallace in the end zone touchdown great catch by Wallace what a sensational catch you're gonna Wallace is gonna go down out and up Johnson number six is covering the receiver goes up. Wallace is very apex and catches the ball. And the main thing, Keith, is he can hold on to it as Johnson is trying to strip it free. Just a sensational play. And the Panthers are back in the ball game. The extra point is good. With 11 minutes and 6 seconds to play in the third quarter, we now have a contest. Oklahoma 21 and Pitt 10. to Shepard and he muffs it and will not return it and so once again Oklahoma will go to work from the 20. Let's go back and look at the touchdown pass. Wallace number 25 the wide receiver caught 45 passes last year. Good fake. He gets a little bit of advantage. Johnson number six played in man to man. You can see Johnson not playing the ball. He is to turn and play the ball whenever Wallace leaps. He goes Johnson goes up just a little bit late. Wallace comes down with the amazing thing to me is he holds on to the ball right there when he hits the turn. Great play. Centers go to the ground game. Hand the ball off to Steve Sewell, a senior from San Francisco. And the fifth defensive people now come out storming. And they get him two yards on that play. Nope, get him four yards on that play. Pittsburgh defense should uh, have a lot of momentum right now. They got the ball away from Oklahoma. The offensive team took it in for a touchdown. Now it's their assignment to go back and get it again. 
They're right up on the last pitch. That's seven of them up there. Six now as one drops off. Coming outside with the football and a first down. Lydell Carr, the fullback. He's long-legged. He got up to the 34-yard line in a hurry. Lydell Carr from Enid, Oklahoma. Highly recruited, true freshman. Just been on the campus a few weeks and playing a very difficult position in the wishbone. As you can see what he's done today, a difficult position is that fullback having to read the blocks and the triple option. Uh, Carr's just done an outstanding job in both games. First down Sooners, they're on 34. They lead by 11. Side and loose. Whoa, look at that movement. And sidestepping that one man was good for another eight yards, and he takes the ball across midfield. Right behind Dillingham and Pickett, the right guard. Watch the blocking develop. Pickett, number 71, weighs 270. Dillingham, 265. Picks up a good block from Sewell, number 13. And another good block. Uh, tell who that is downfield but uh, Carr makes a nice run if Sewell had been able to get a hold of uh, Callahan and get him down I'm not sure what Carr wouldn't have scored but he missed him on the block and uh, Sewell carries this time and Steve hits down for the better part of three yards all the sack number 87 all the cert 144 tackles last year, two interceptions, six foot four, has a nose for the football, very mobile move, very good, makes a good read on that counter play and stops it for short yardage. Second down and seven, Oklahoma, fifth 46. Sooners trying to respond to the Panther touchdown as we start the second half of play. Danny Bradley gives the ball inside. Carr again and tiptoes a little bit, then turns on some power, takes on the fifth tackler and carries him past the yard marker for what appears to be another Oklahoma first down. What is happening in the line of scrimmage without trying to be too technical, the fullback is now hitting one man wider, out over behind the tackle rather than behind the guard, and there's a natural crease there in behind Pickett and Dillingham as the ends are running up the field for the quarterback. Hope that one keeps off good. <laughs> but that's what's happening. <laughs> huh? <laughs> First down, ball just inside the pit 39. Again, Carr and a penalty play. And again, Carr's got good yardage, about six, maybe seven on the carry. Let's see about the penalty. While we're looking at the penalty, what I was trying to say, the wishbone varies their play of the fullback according to what the defense is doing in a halftime. Let them make those adjustments. Pits offside, they'll take the play. More yards. I think. Could be first down and five, or it could be second down and about four, or short four, or long three. Yeah. The quarterback has had so much trouble, Bradley, getting outside because the defensive end is running up the field to force Bradley to keep the ball and cut back very dramatically, and the outside game has not been any good for Oklahoma. We're going to take a look in just a minute, another play, and show you exactly what we're talking about as soon as this penalty is over. They'd rather have first and five instead of yes. second and four. Watch Dolman at the right of your screen as we Off get sides, defense, first down. Watch Dolman, number 56. He's going to run right up the field, take the quarterback, and then Dillingham makes a good block and is a natural crease right there as you see the fullback run right inside for a big game. So it's first and five after the penalty. The ball is inside the Pittsburgh 34 for Oklahoma. They started this possession at their 20. This is Carr. Carr steps away from that one tackler and falls down around the 31 as he's gang tackled. John Lewis, a corner coming up to that side, actually made the stop on him. That's the time remaining in the third quarter in a 21 to 10 ball game. I guess I'm asked more than any question about looking at football for him. Why does the team run into the narrow side of the field? The defense dictates that by lining a superior number of people to the wide side, forcing you to go in the boundary. Second down, two and a half. That's Carr again, and the spot will determine whether or not he has a first down. It would appear that he does. 
Oklahoma's line of scrimmage coming off with a good surge. Pittsburgh going through the gaps and coming up the field, leaving some just very natural openings for the fullback and cars picking up momentum. Notre Dame and Missouri, two weeks from today, that'll be played down in Columbia. They're going to have a big party honoring Coach Don Perot on Friday night. Your former boss. Yes, sir. Friend. is at the 27 for Pitt. And they give that ball to Carr again. He's going to sleep well tonight. They wrestle him down this time right about the line of scrimmage for no gain. In rushing statistics in the ball game, Oklahoma now with 162. Pittsburgh only 38. Uh, you could tell Barry running hard, hollering, and Barry sweat to hollering at the, full, at the line. They busted the blocking, and he was upset about it. Here's the rushing yards. Oklahoma 162 to 38. That's Mervyn Johnson, the offensive uh, assistant head coach and offensive line coach, standing alongside of him. They were on my staff for many, many years together. They've been close friends, long time. Bradley on that short drop, whips it out to Derek Shepard. Shepard is locked by a leg and cannot get away. Number 28 coming over to hold him down. That's the corner, Melvin Dean. It's tough, though, when a corner has got to take on a guy like Shepard or a Rhymes, a one-on-one -on -one out there, because they're both so quick. Well, they've been playing very tight, Dean, and, and also the uh, safeties have been up very close, and you, before this game is over, you're going to see a fake of that short pass and go deep. It's third down and five now for Oklahoma. Ball is on the pit 23. Bradley rolls it to the open side of the field, dumps it off. Got it there too late. He won't get his first down and out of the play because the, the receiver had made his cut, and that's when Keith Jackson had to have the ball. But the tight end, seeing it for the first time today, really didn't have a chance to turn it upfield. Jackson's going to just fake a block and then go out in the flat and hope that the defensive cornerback would come up. But the ball was a little bit late getting there, arriving, allowing the defensive backs to come up and make the play. John Lewis, number four. Bashar is in for the ex for the field goal try now. And the ball is going to be spotted at the 23, uh, 28. It'll be a 38-yard shot, and it is no good. So from 38 yards, with the wind gusting across into his face, Lashar misses the field goal, and the score remains unchanged. In my line of work, University of Pittsburgh students are claiming a record today. They cite the fact that Alabama had the world record set last week with 8,271 painted fans in the stadium. I don't know how they know that. But they're claiming 9,373 for the record today. I give them the record. I, I can see. We all can see. <laughs> As if it really truly matters. Jimmy back to throw it on first down. Gets it away over the head of Bill Wallace. Keith, if the last possession is an indication, Pittsburgh has decided to try to win this ball game passing and pick the spots to run the football rather than try to establish a run, and I think that's their best chance to win. Contemini is better throwing the ball, I think, than their running game is with a freshman tailback. The only problem with that now, Frank, is this. The longest possession of the game for Pittsburgh, two minutes and 15 seconds. So that, that defense has got to play a lot of ball. Though. You're right. That's their best chance, throwing the ball. 5-29 to play in the third quarter, 21 to 10 Oklahoma. They try the running game one more time. Then one more time, it does not work for much. Charles Gladman brought down by Tony Casilla. How, how would you like to have a nose guard that is uh, weighs 275 pounds, bench press is 465 and runs a 48? Well, that's what number 92 can do, and you can see where he uses all of that ability and he even tries to take the ball away in game close. What a player he is. Besides that, he took a helmet in the ribs. And he's back in there playing out the a chance. a little breathing trouble with it. Third down on that loss at 14. Third and 14, continue to throw it, looking and looking. Got a man Gets open. it away. He's got Wallace wide open. Wallace has got some help. And it's a first down at the Oklahoma 45. 
was one for Seward and White after Kanjemi, and once he was turned inside, that left Kanjemi wide open to come rolling out and find a receiver. Watch this now. If 96 had come the other way, that play might not have worked. You can see Kanjemi scramble when your defense gambles and the quarterback scrambles and he gets tied, you get burned, and that's what happened to Oklahoma. Watch Wallace. They're playing him man for man. Then when the scramble takes place, nobody finds him. He's lost. He's out open early for practice, as we say. Gladman carries on the ground and picks up about two yards. Wallace now with six catches for 106 yards in the ball game. And a touchdown. When you get when you get man for man and nobody's covering you, it's kind of like you went out early with your quarterback, Keith, and uh, had early practice. That's how open Wallace was on the last play as number three McIntyre, the fullback, comes out. It's only the eighth time in the ball game, too, that they have run behind Fraley. Run behind Fraley and throw the ball. That's the best chance to win. Second down and seven. And Jimmy pops it down the middle, and that's incomplete. 44 was there to break it up. Brian Bosworth, linebacker for the Sooners. Oh, it's going to be third down and long down. Third and seven. Nebraska beating Minnesota 38 to seven. And once again, the Nebraska Ibac is over 100 yards. Jeff Smith going for 138 today. And Miami came back to beat Purdue 28 to 17. Pittsburgh three out of 11 on third down. They've got Brown and Platt in there lined up in the backfield now. But it reached pass here. And Jimmy drops. Gets it off to the sidelines. Penalty flag thrown. Bill Wallace was knocked down. It's going to go against Oklahoma. Andre Johnson trying to cover Wallace over there and got a little aggressive and knocked him down. Wallace has good moves. He's cagey. He knows what he's doing. He, he called 45 passes last year. A little fake. Now he's going to try to go deep. And you can see Johnson take his hands and push him down. Now it's going to be a 15-yard penalty under the new rules this year. And I like that rule. I do, too. Anything to help the defense. Well, it's not only that, but I never really thought it was fair to throw a Hail Mary pass 50 yards and somebody get penalized for an honest effort and get nailed for the entirety of the yardage. This is a fair decision, I think. It gives them a first down. It gives them a substantial amount of real estate and without penalizing effort. Well, the only bad thing about the penalty is if if a defensive man is whipped on the play, it's an obvious touchdown, he can then push the man down and uh, get a touchdown. But uh, balancing all things, I think it's a good rule. I'm for helping the defense a little bit. I didn't think college football was supposed to be a 45 to 44 game. Defensive pass interference, first down. That's a... My producer said, I'd like to see a few more. Chuck Howard, <laughs> 45 to 40. Well, I would, too. 27-yard line now. Pittsburgh, first down. Oklahoma defense being back down the field. Pass it away. And it's off the hands of Chuck Scales. Swinging out of the backfield. Incomplete. Thrown hard and a little too high. Keith, that's a good call because um, Jimmy had the man open. He was heard it. Put too much stuff on it. He just laid it up with tissue paper. It would have been a touchdown. John is now 10 out of 24 for 146 yards of the ball game. And he's regained his confidence. That's obvious. Three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Oklahoma leading by 11, 21 to 10. The throw again. Passes away. Good to Wallace. Wallace is caught instantly by Tony Rayburn, a sophomore out of Oklahoma City. The toughest position to rush the pass, as we said early, is the nose guard. But here's an isolation on Wallace. A little delay pattern. Think he's going deep and he's coming underneath the tight end. Good reaction by the defensive secondary, number 35, Raven. But here's Casillas, number 92. One man, two man, sometimes three men blocking on him. But look at his determination. Just keep pushing back, trying to get his arm up in the air. Looks like Mike Ruth in the second half of last week's Boston yeah. College Alabama game. He just got stronger and stronger and stronger as the game went along. That was and Casillas is doing the same thing. Pittsburgh is called timeout now. They're down on deep in Oklahoma territory. Some confusion, so can Jimmy wanted time to talk about it. So they've had their talk on the sidelines now. And 
they're looking at third at six. Ball just inside the Oklahoma 23. Thank you. Really love to have seven here. Yes, he wants seven, but he wants to be sure and not take the loss and throw up an intercept. Diving for the line marker, and he's close. And Jimmy has got his confidence back. In the game, the Fiesta Bowl last year, he had 31 passes. He got the first down. 31 out of 44 last year in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State. This is their best they've looked in these two possessions, throwing the ball, picking their spots to run. Good effort by Jimmy. Keith, the receiver's covered, broke right up the middle and made a dive for the first down. Good competitor, good competitor. Ball is at the Oklahoma 16. Brown and Gladman, the running back. Oklahoma almost jumped. That's Gladman. Well, the fit running game is, I don't know what word fits it, pathetic? Well, it's, yes, that does, but you've got a freshman tailback making a very bad choice of his cut. Going outside, you just weaken yourself when you start up and then try to cut to the outside. There's no blocking out there. Turn back in behind those big linemen. Here are the total yards. Oklahoma 78 passes, 156. Pittsburgh 150 passing and 42. That's 26 carries for 42 yards on the ground. That's pathetic. <laughs> Lost back to the 18. Second down and 12 to Jimmy and wants to get it away. Goes into the corner with it. It's incomplete, number 81. Dexter Edmonds had it in his hands, but Keith Stanberry, who's 6'1", 205, the senior strong safety, pulled it loose. Man-for-man -man coverage with a tight end crossing the line. You can see that's a tough curve, but Stanberry's right behind him, and then the ball is thrown just a little bit behind the receiver. Edmonds turns around and goes up with a fight with Stanberry, and the ball falls incomplete. That was close. Another th er, good pass. It would have been completed. Yep. It good. It just didn't lead him enough. So you come to third and 12. Pittsburgh at the Oklahoma 18. Minute and 57 to play in the third quarter. Play action. Gives Kinjimi time. Gets it off. Incomplete. Stanbury covering the intended receiver Edmonds on it. They were asking for an interference call as Stanbury made some contact, but didn't get it. And there was an official right there with it, and so you're looking at fourth down. Well, a busy, uh, busy, busy weekend for pro football here on ABC. 9 o'clock tomorrow night, Sunday night, out of Cleveland, Ohio. The Denver Broncos, Johnny Elway and company, going in against the Cleveland Browns and Paul McDonald, a couple of young quarterbacks in the NFL, squaring off there. And then on Monday night, the troops move on to Orchard Park where the Miami Dolphins hit the road to play the Buffalo Bills at Rich Stadium. Both games, 9 Eastern time, live here on ABC. 35-yard field goal by Mark Brasco. He is no good. Well, he hit one from 37. He missed one from 35. 117 to play in a third quarter, 21 to 10, Oklahoma. Oklahoma will come back now from their 20 first down and you've got Jerome Ledbetter in the ball game for the first time Jerome a senior out of Muskogee played a lot during his career and they give the ball away to Patrick Collins the freshman out of Tulsa and Collins wiggles around for a couple of yards BYU in the fourth quarter now out to 31 9 over Tulsa don't doubt the quality of that BYU team and Ohio State had a rough time with Oregon State last week pounding Washington State this week Florida winning big today and Florida State I think is going to be one of the tough teams of the year another big day for Greg Allen and a new Florida State rushing record here. Bradley pitches that ball outside and uh, Sewell can't turn it upfield. Melvin Dean made that play he's a senior at Pitt comes from Cordell Georgia. Made a sensational tackle 
open field tackle, one of the most difficult things to do is come up and force the ball carrier to turn inside and make the play also. You can see Dean, number 28, gets his head in front of the ball carrier, wraps his leg or arms around the leg and pulls Sewell, who is 6'4", 215 to the ground. It is third down and seven for Oklahoma. And Lydell Carr is back in there. It reads pass. It will be. No, oh, it's a draw as Bradley comes up the middle with it and steps away to a first down. And goes out of bounds to avoid the punishment as he reaches the 35. That was a call play. The quarterback draw. Watch the guard. Right, right in the middle, you can see the blocking take place as Bradley takes three steps back, and the rushers just take themselves right out of the play. A big opening for Bradley, a good cut there, which allows him to make enough yards for the first down. Umpire was the only obstacle there for a moment for Bradley when he started. <laughs> first down, Sooners, their own 35. They lead 21 to 10 with 27 seconds to play in the third quarter, and this is Carr running up the middle. And finally hit takes the solid contact to give you an idea how strong the freshman is having taken that whack from Troy Benson he turns around and walked backward for another yard and a half Oh, he did because Al Desert, the other linebacker hit him from the side just as Benson did two fine fine defensive football players sandwiched him so the third quarter is over and after three 21 10 Oklahoma will continue after this commercial message and the word from our local stations. Third quarter stats. Oklahoma leads in first downs and rushes. Pittsburgh leads in passing. In this third quarter, Oklahoma, uh, Pittsburgh scored one touchdown and missed the field goal. Oklahoma has not scored. Second down and seven. Bradley back. Looks and looks and looks it. Downfield. He's got rhymes wide open. And down he goes. And again, the pass was late. If Danny had been able to get that ball to Buster earlier, it was six. Good call from the press box when the defensive cornerback is coming up, playing the run, number 28. Watch number 28. And all of a sudden, Grimes goes wide open. There's nobody there. That's the danger that you worry about. And you try to defense the wishbone. Your defensive backs get over anxious to support the run. Grimes is wide open. Had it been a perfectly thrown pass, it would have been a touchdown. It's first down Oklahoma at the fifth 21. Bradley now 9 out of 15 for 129 yards and a touchdown. Inside goes Lydell Carr, the fullback. And he's stopped at the 13 by Bill Callahan. And again, Frank, it was one man between uh, the Oklahoma ball carrier and the goal line. That's what the wishbone does to your defense when the fullback has the ball. The linebacker is chasing the quarterback. The safety man is chasing the pitch man. So the fullback just has to miss, make one man missing for the long game. As we look at Barry's foot. Lydell Carr has now established himself. 22 carries and 105 yards. Second down and one. Into the middle goes the play. The surge for the first down. Looks like they've got it. And from our studios, here's Jim. Coming live. Jim Lampley again in New York. There's a major upset brewing in Palo Alto, California. Mike White's first trip back to the Bay Area since leaving California, but his Illini now trail Stanford. Only one win a year ago. 31-13 in the fourth quarter. That touchdown run by Kalana Park made it 31-13 as the Cardinal tries to upset the Illini. Back to you, Keith. Well, that's Jack Elway. He's a good football coach. Elway had a great record at San Jose State. Knows how to score with that football. Yeah, evidence by the score we just heard. Oklahoma beat him 19 to 7 last week. But they're out in Palo Alto this week. Illinois beat Missouri last week. On third down and a half a yard, Bradley goes over the top and secures the first down this time at the Pittsburgh 10. So it looks like it'll be first and goal if they mark it on or inside the 10. And it's, where did they put it? Just short of the 10. Oklahoma, as we look at what's happened in the quarters, the scoring, you can see that uh, Oklahoma has not scored this half. Oklahoma's playing with two freshmen in the backfield. Two starting halfbacks are hurt. They're playing with freshmen. Johnson got hurt today. Spencer Tillman did not make the trip because of a hamstring. First down, I suppose they could conceivably get a first down without scoring, but it'll be very close and difficult to do. That gain is about a yard for Steve Sewell. 
With Tillman and Johnson in that backfield on the wishbone, it is explosive. Carr has had a sensational day for a freshman, but he's still trying to find his way. So when they get them all healthy, no, no, look out. That's Carr. Uh, Johnson rushed for 945 yards last year, and Tillman for over a thousand is fresh. On second down, they go inside with Carr, and Carr is going to be pinched and brought down just about the seven. So it'll be third down and long. And I'm a little bit surprised today that we have not seen Bradley carrying the ball. Of course, the defensive people, uh, they make you uh, read it differently week in and week out. And the one thing that Coach Fazio's people did not want to allow was Bradley any freedom running around with the ball. Keep so. a defensive end is coming right into Bradley's face. Every time he hands off to the fullback, there's a man ready to hit him had he kept the ball. down from the seven. Bradley on a deep roll is under pressure, but he runs away from it. He's trying to get away from Golden. He gets his pass away in the end zone. Touchdown to Keith Jackson. Pittsburgh players think they were pushed off by Jackson. And uh, we watched Jackson see what happened. The Pittsburgh players are complaining. Look to me like that Jackson does inadvertently push the man, number 31, right here. Let's see in just a minute. Coming up He's going to push in, his inadvertent push right there. Bump. Jackson just bumps him. That's right. And uh, that's not illegal. That is not illegal. Inadvertent. Not obvious. Not intentional. And so the Sooners stick it in the end zone with 11 minutes and 28 seconds to play in the football game. The kick is up and good, Belashar. And 27 28. That's a lot of points to make up. 18 points. Oklahoma leads in the final quarter. It's the first one of his career. He's only a freshman, not a little rock. Broke a lot of Arkansas hearts when he went north to Oklahoma. I guess that's north, isn't it? Sort of sideways, actually. Sideways, <laughs> probably. But uh, that was an impressive drive by Oklahoma. They went 80 yards in 11 plays. They chewed up five minutes and 19 seconds of the clock and rebuilt the lead to 18 points. Dante Wiley, three yards deep. No, he won't come. Next Saturday, no football here on ABC as we bring you boxing. First off, we've got Richie Sandoval defending against Edgar Roman, the WBA Bantamweight Championship out of Monte Carlo. Then back to New York City for the Fifth Avenue Mile. And then ABC's Wide World of Sports will go back to Monaco and we will have Donald Curry defending his welterweight championship, WBA, against Nino La Roca. And as soon as those fights are over, I'm heading to Switzerland and around the golf or two. You going to play golf in Monaco? Nah, I don't round. think so. I'm going to Lausanne. And your wife's going with you. Kanjimi in trouble, but running away from it, and he is finally corralled at the 21, Jimmy, maybe the, the 22. Dante Jones running him down. Boy, oh, those linebackers, they're both freshmen. They both can fly. And Kanjimi is shaken up on the play. Well, that'll get Cummings warming up in a hurry. Cummings was the starting quarterback last year. I think he uh, had a very serious injury in the Tennessee game, the first game of the season, and, and Jimmy came in and took his place and has held that spot since. That's Looks to be a leg problem for uh, Jimmy. There's John Cummings, number 10, getting out in a hurry, starting to warm up as they tend to Jimmy. You've got 11 minutes and 11 seconds to play in the football game. Tim Brandt will check on it for us, but it appears to be a knee. And Cummings is into the lineup. John gets the pass away. The pass is incomplete, intended for Tom Brown. John Cummings is a junior from Montclair, New Jersey, 6'2", 195. He's a good quarterback. There's no question about his ability. But there's a lot of pressure on him coming into the ball game, training by 18 points, looking at the blitz of Oklahoma on virtually every down, knowing that uh, he's got to throw the ball to win. Oklahoma knows that. Very tough situation to, to perform, coming cold off of the bench. It is third down for Pittsburgh. The ball is at the fifth, 21. Third and nine. They've got three wide people now as John Cummings drops back the throw. The pressure is on. The pass is away. The pass is good. 
Tavares. But it is well short of the first down. And, and there's a penalty flag back there. And I think it might go against Pittsburgh because somebody had penetrated. I didn't get his number for Oklahoma. A little like Mike Aljo, 61. And Dexter Edmonds or somebody. I don't De know who it, it was. It was Dexter Edmonds. Clipped him from behind, trying to keep him off the pass. Number. Almost tackled him. Yes, that's about what he did. Holding, offense, refuse, fourth down. They refuse the penalty because it brings up fourth and uh, about six. And so Pitt Pittsburgh will have to go to the punt. Here's the play. And they see Aljo 61 coming. And you see number 81, Edmonds, just fall on his legs from behind uh, as uh, the Oklahoma player was free for the rush. Illegal use of the hands, holding, whatever. Chris Jellick is in the punt for Pitt now with 10-20 to play, and some of the folks are going home. Not a particularly good kick. And Sonny Brown in the receiving position for the first time puts it down for Oklahoma at the Sooners 47. Here's Tim Brent. All right, Keith, I was just talking to John Conjemi. He's right here. They're still working on it. They have packed his right ankle in ice. It's the outside part of the ankle just above the foot. He said it just turned under him on the artificial surface. He went down. He's in an awful lot of pain. He was asking how much time is left in the game. He wants to get back in, but right now it doesn't look like he'll be back. Okay, Timmy, bad luck for John. Ball is on the 46. First down, Oklahoma. It's off a good field position, especially in their possession coming off an 80-yard drive for a touchdown. Two, twelve. Heats on the pit defense right here. They give the ball to Carr, and he gets a couple from the 46 to the 48. Looking into some of the baseball scores of the day, Chicago beat New York 5-4, so the Cubs continue their march. San Diego lost, however, to Houston 3-2. In the American League, Detroit beat Toronto, and California Lubbard, the White Sox, 11 to 2. Reggie Jackson is now within 200 home uh, two home runs of 500. He had 498 the other night. I don't know if he had one today. Jerome Ledbetter comes into the backfield now for Oklahoma. Second down and eight for the Sooners. Bradley with that little quick drop, little pop outside, and it's going to be a first down and a fumble, and Pittsburgh's got the football. Pittsburgh's got the football at the 42-yard line as Derek Shepard had the catch, trying to wrestle away and pick up additional yardage. And how many times have you seen that happen? Shepard just forgot about the football as he starts his little dance. He's wide open. You can see him just shuffling those shoulders and the headgear. Now protect the ball. But it was just stripped out by number 54, Benson, and Pittsburgh has an opportunity. Incidentally, Reggie Jackson did hit a home run today, so Reg has got 499. That's 21 for the year. The Angels are right in the fight for the pennants, too. Oh, yeah. Half a game out starting play today. First down, Pittsburgh. Ball just beyond their 41. John Cummings looking for some protection. Get the pass off. It is complete. It is caught at the Oklahoma 43 by Bill Wallace, who's having a great day. Wallace, number 25, knows how to find the opening spot. Oklahoma's playing a zone this time. Me, they're just playing the areas of the field. Now he works to the open area inside the linebacker, gets down on his knees and cradles it in. Eight catches, 126 yards for Bill Wallace. Cummings again, going to the air. Throws this one behind Wallace. He didn't handle that one too well. That's a tough break for Kajimni. Jimmy, number 15, had a great year as a sophomore. Looking forward to this year. We hope that he's not hurt serious. There's his numbers for today. Oklahoma defense has played inspired football. Very much so. Second down and 10 for Pitt. Cummings on a deep drop this time. 92's got him. Casillas, Tony Casillas, coming from the nose guard position, runs him down. Fourth sack of a Pittsburgh quarterback in the ball game, and the loss is huge all the way back to the pit 43. When you have a nose guard that can run the forward two, that we see we saw a little bit of his speed right there. He just ran Cummings down. Cummings was trying to get outside and couldn't do it. You see Four, his tackling for the loss. 14-yard loss. Makes it third and long, long yardage. 20. 
four. Down the middle, Edmund loops it, grabs at it, can't come down with it. Dexter Edmonds had a chance at it. Cummings put the ball right in the middle from behind the offense. You can see that anytime you throw in the middle, you have to throw it over the linebackers and in front of the safety. The ball goes right over the linebacker in front of the safety. Perfect throw, but Edmonds just could not hold it. Ball goes into the air and Rockwood came close to intercepting. On fourth and 24, they'll punt it. Yellick is in. Sonny Brown, deep for Oklahoma. He has had, not had a good day kicking the ball. It takes an Oklahoma bounce. Everything's going bad right now for the Panthers. It'll be Oklahoma's ball first down at their own 33. That was a 23-yard punt. 8-11 to play. When the well runs dry on you on personnel sometimes, these days under the 3095 rule, takes a while to get it back in order. I talked to Barry Switzer about it. It's brought parity in college football, and uh, the dominant powers are still the powers today. But I'm going to tell you, uh, they got to play every Saturday. They don't go out and hang a half a hundred on a half like we used to in the good old days. <laughs> That's true. You just uh, There is no dominant team That's right, right. now. A key injury here or there, and you've moved from a power to an also. Here comes Oklahoma now, first down, just outside the 33, leading 28 to 10. They'll stay on the ground as long as Pittsburgh will allow it. Steve Sewell picks up the uh, yardage for them there, and he got a fair gain out of it, close to five yards on the carry. In the running game today, it's been Oklahoma, 48 carries for 191 yards. Pittsburgh has 28 carries and only 30. Yards. Well, that's about what we expected uh, as far as Oklahoma's concerned, but I thought uh, Pittsburgh would run a lot more as we look at some other scores. The uh, point is, too, that Oklahoma was minus two in the first half. This is Sewell, and Sewell has got the first down as he gets out to the 45. What was that Air Force Wyoming score? I missed it. I missed it. Air Force had scored 75 points last week, and uh, and they had just been thundering up and down the field, but they got it today from Wyoming. Wyoming had been pasted by Nebraska, but Wyoming is a wishbone team, and they got the Air Force today, 26 to 20. Both wishbone teams. They both yes, yeah, right. Still running the wishbone today. <laughs> Oklahoma, Keith, are in two tight ends, a power offense. Pittsburgh has everybody on the line of scrimmage rushing. This is the freshman Collins, and Patrick Collins slashes for a couple of yards, and that's all. In Oklahoma now, it's very obviously fine just to sit on the ball and run it and run it and run it. Pittsburgh has two timeouts left, but I think that's academic. 28-10 ball game. It was that long march, 80-yard drive by Oklahoma that got them the touchdown in the fourth quarter that's making all the difference because Pittsburgh had come back in their first possession of the second half and took it right into the end zone to make it 21-10. Wouldn't have been able to do much sense in a Sewell carrying here and Sewell gets it out to midfield and just over. Keep it up. Midfield strike. Another key point of the ball game was Oklahoma defense stopping Pittsburgh and forcing a field goal attempt and then uh, Pittsburgh missed the field goal attempt which would have put them well uh, just eight points behind at the time. Well, I've got to say at this particular moment, I don't think the Pittsburgh team is uh, it's not a top ten team. No, they're not. They have the offense has uh, not been successful. They've been uh, making mistakes. Could not run the football. You got to run the football some. The pass is away and over here wide open as Bradley hits Sewell and Sewell's got an Oklahoma first down at the pit 36. Once again, Mac Brown, the offensive coordinator, as Barry Switzer told me, is a brilliant offensive coach. He was the one, Keith, at LSU two years ago that helped uh, take the LSU Tigers to the Orange Bowl and a near victory over Nebraska. Good fake in the backfield, wide open receivers. You can see when you play the run, look how wide open the receivers get. Super Bradley has now hit seven in a row, Frank. Gives him 12 out of 18 for the day and 161 yards. Plus the fact he's counted for two touchdowns. Up the middle goes Carr. And Carr has a first down for Oklahoma just short of the 10 yard line. Evidently, Bradley is doing a good job of moving the play around. You can see that 
the play is going to be run right up the middle. A little trap play. Good blocking by Chuck Thomas. Number 73, the all-conference Big 8 center. Good blocking downfield. The tight end gets down and makes the block there. Car Carr just continues to fight the yardage and eat up the clock. Well, he's got 26 carries for 136 yards. Pretty good day. A true freshman from Enid, Oklahoma. Got it again. This time there is a collision. Number 76, Lorenzo Freeman, a sophomore from East Camden, New Jersey, took him on and stopped him. Well, I'm impressed with the Oklahoma offensive scheme. I think that it's a in today's football is going to be a lot more successful the fact that they can run the wishbone and then they have an auxiliary offensive passing which they haven't had what Barry tell me at the halftime Frank Brawls we never had a two minute <laughs> offense we've got one now and they've moved down and scored right for the hats that was a key touchdown they've run for 228 yards today as I we guess. look at the great communicator of college football I think Barry Switzer communicates I think as well as anybody the game has ever seen there's your option to the outside Steve Shaw touchdown So the Oklahoma Sooners, they last played 1975. The Sooners beat Pitt 46 10, and they're laying it on them here today in the, Pittsburgh. The triple option, fake to the fullback, take it outside. Good block by Collins, 32. Pitch the ball to Sewell, picking up the block of Collins, a half back in the split end, down the field and over the top. Touchdown. Great run by Sewell. Leshar for the extra point try. Kyle Irvin, who is a freshman quarterback from Broken Arrow, does the holding for Oklahoma. The kick is good, and it's Sooners 35, Panthers 10. 80 yards to make it 28. Now they've gone 66 to make it 35 to 10. And 414 to play in the ball game. Oklahoma had just enough passing to keep the drive going on both of those uh, possessions. Leshar almost fell down. He stumbled before he kicked that ball, but he still got it off pretty well, and Dante Wiley brings it back outside the 20 to the 25. So Pitt will go to work now from the 25. John Cummings in. John can Jimmy Hurt. Two weeks from today here on ABC, CFA football matches Notre Dame and Missouri. Irish were behind 17-0 to Michigan State today and uh, came back to win 24-20. Missouri lost a tough one today to Wisconsin 35-34. Kind of hunch Dave McLean's Badgers might be a nettlesome bunch in that Big Ten this year. Cummings pass, quick pop incomplete. Had to throw it hard, trying to hit Wiley to get him in one-on-one -on -one out there, but about the time the ball arrived, so did a man in a white shirt, and the ball went flying away. Well, the Oklahoma defense has been inspired all day, playing man for man a lot of the time, rushing, and now become cautious. They're backing up mostly to prevent the deep pass, trying to let the receivers catch the ball in front of them and make the tackle. Oklahoma's next opponent is Baylor. Pitt plays Temple next week over in Philadelphia. Down the middle, penalty flag. Pass is caught by Craig Hayward. And Hayward goes for what could be a pit first down out of the 42, but let's see about the penalty. I'm not sure whether Oklahoma had 11 or 12 players on the field. One ran out the last minute, and I think they're counting them. One, no, it's mm -hmm. no, it's penalty against uh, Pittsburgh. Ineligible man downfield. Oklahoma had 10 players on the field up until just before the play was snapped. One ran out on the field. Move them back, Switzer says. Move them back. And let's check in for a moment with Jim Lampley. We'll try to keep you up to date on some of the scores now in the closing moments. Three big upsets today. Washington's defense stifled Michigan, and the Huskies got a 13 of 16 performance from quarterback Hugh Millen as they beat third-ranked Michigan. Penn State upset Iowa 20 to 17. At Iowa, the big factor for Iowa turnovers, and Penn State won without D.J. Dozier, their top running back. And Georgia Tech beat Alabama 16 and 6 dropping Alabama to 0 and 2 the last time that happened at the beginning of a season was in 1956 under a coach named JD Whitworth back to you Keith was that the team that went 0 and 10 with Bart Starr at quarterback huh and Bear Bryant came in the, the next year yep. no, uh, no I'm sorry Bear came with the intercepted yeah. the pass is picked off and it could be it is touchdown Oklahoma Ricky Dixon Pittsburgh going to the air. The ball got a little sail in it from the arm of 
Cummings and Dixon picked it off and had a free walk to the end zone. Dixon gets a tremendous break on the ball coming up catching the ball going forward. You can see breaking in front of Siva. Perfect timing on his part laying back and fighting the throw then coming up in front has clear sailing 41 yards for the touchdown. Another freshman. The 22 freshmen on this trip by Oklahoma, a very young football team, a victory like this so impressive can help them many, many ways, mainly momentum and confidence. The extra point kick is good at 3-11 to play in the football game, and it's now turned into a blowout. Oklahoma, 42, hit 10. A 42-10 ball game with 341 to play. Penn State coming up with a big win today. I would imagine some of the thinking might be that the balance of power may possibly have shifted back toward the middle of the state with the Nittany Lions. This Pittsburgh team's loaded with talent. It's not quite at the point where the offense can be very productive. Donnie Wiley brings it out across the 20, up to the 22, and more information now from Jim. We showed you the upsets. Here are three top teams that won. Nebraska beating Minnesota 38-7. Jeff Smith 183 yards. And the Huskers lost four fumbles, but one big anyway. Miami came from behind to beat Purdue 28-17. The difference in the ball game, superior Miami running in the second half. Kozar didn't throw a touchdown pass. And Ohio State rolled over Washington State 44-0. Byers 145 yards, two touchdowns. Keith? That cuts me up a little. And off is inside. Mark Bailey carrying for Pittsburgh. What do you see, Frank? Now, we know full well. You made one point, though, I think that's very significant to me. When you're operating out of the I formation and you're alternating uh, four people, literally, at tailback here, uh, that, that would seemingly take away some of the authority from an I-formation offense. And they have no consistency. They've got young tailbacks, and they cannot make the right cut, and it's taking the running game away from them, forced into a single passing game, and that's not good. You have to have a good mix. Cummings throws the ball, pass is caught, and Tom Brown, again swinging out of the backfield, gets a first down for the Panthers up around the 35, maybe up near the 36. More now from Jim. Cliffhangers now. Navy got 117 yards from Napoleon McCallum and came from behind twice in the fourth quarter to beat North Carolina. Syracuse scored the tying touchdown on its last play, then kicked the extra point to beat Hard Luck Northwestern. Missouri had a chance to win. George Shorthose dropped a two-point conversion pass with a minute and 28 seconds to go. Wisconsin one by one. Cummings back to throw here as Pittsburgh is being pummeled by Oklahoma. 42 to 10. Craig Hayward had the ball, dropped it. And nothing has gone right here in the last few minutes for the Pitt Panthers. Two or three things have been impressive about the Oklahoma defense, which has dominated the game. I think it's really been the difference in this context. One of them is Reed, the uh, sophomore tackle, number uh, 96, coming in, having a great game. He didn't start last year. And also the linebackers, Keith Jones and Bosworth, have been outstanding. The cornerbacks have picked up man-for-man -man coverage and played it well. I know that the defensive coaches are very pleased with the performance. Cummings trying to go deep downfield, has a man off his hands and complete Matt Stinnett. Stinnett got one hand up and on it, but couldn't hang on to it. And uh, again, a reminder, we've got two NFL games for you. Tomorrow night, 9 Eastern time, you have Denver at Cleveland. That's Paul McDonald and John Elway matchup there. And then uh, you have Miami at Buffalo in our regular Monday night presentation of NFL football. I was looking at the, the uh, Oklahoma schedule. They play Baylor next week, then Kansas State for their homecoming on the 29th. And of course, uh, then they go down after a week off to play Texas at Dallas. Right now, it looks like the Sooners might go into that Texas game, quite possibly undefeated. That's what Barry Switzer was telling me last night, that uh, he felt like he could win this game. He might be there. Again, Jim. Dan Jenkins, wherever you are, this one's for you. TCU is beating Utah State 55-18. The last time the Horned Frogs scored that many points was 52 years ago, before Davey O'Brien. Yes, even before Sammy Baugh. But they're looking good today. Back to you, Keith. Good grief. 55 points for the Horned Frogs. Jim Wack is a good football coach. Little short pass is complete to Wallace. And Wallace wriggles his way down to about the 40 as we get inside two minutes to play in this football game. Oklahoma uh, 
ends their season this year on November 24 against Oklahoma State, which looks like they're pretty real themselves. It's been a hard day for the Pitt Panthers, as you can see there. BYU won big today over Tulsa. Another big day for Robbie Bosco. There's the Notre Dame score we gave you earlier. And West Virginia got 14 first quarter points and then hung on to beat Virginia Tech up at Blacksburg. The penalty flag is thrown as Cummings goes deep with it. The pass intended for Jeff Casper, and you may get a hold call downfield against the Oklahoma defense. This is the new rule coming into effect when the defensive quarterback is beaten on the play. It's what it appears. Then he immediately puts his hands on to prevent the touchdown. Illegal use of the hands. You can see it here. The right Senate is going to be faking out and probably could have gone by number 35 uh, Haywood, the defensive back, and Haywood just charges into him rather than drop off and cover him like a defensive back should. Rayburn. Rayburn, I'm sorry. Tony Rayburn. <laughs> I had a pit back. The illegal substitution against the defense. Five down penalty. It's a first down, an illegal substitution. Somebody came on the field late, I guess. They're trying to get everybody a little game time here now with a minute and a half to play. And Cummings is back to throw again under some pressure. Throws it out short to Brown. Brown's coming back the other way, getting a little help. And gets inside the 30 to about the 28. More scores now with Jim. Hot quarterbacks, you heard it. will be happy on the farm out west, won't they? That pass is dropped. You know, deflected at the line a little bit. And uh, Craig Hayward couldn't hang on to it when he got to him. And he's had about three or four of them on his hands now. He's not been able to hang on. Well, Barry Switzer, who's a winningest coach and active coach in America today, came to Oklahoma. And when he took over as the job, head coach job, they did not lose for 29 straight ball games. You can see how happy he is. The last three years, his team's been 8-4. and four. He's been catching some criticism. And this is a very critical year for him and a big win today. Cummings pass is caught inside the 25 at about the 24. And once more, we check in with Jim. 39 seconds to play. Comes to the line of scrimmage. First down at the Oklahoma 24. And 25 seconds to play now. John Cummings continuing to throw into the end zone. The pass is incomplete intended for Jeff Casper. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Ruin Arledge. Coverage of the Oklahoma Pit game today produced by Chuck Howard. Directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, John Allen, associate director, John McGinnis, our technical manager, Bob Armbruster, our unit manager, Bob Zinke, our statistician, Dave Berenson, and our spotter, Todd Berry. It is a fine thing to make the trek across, uh, halfway across the country and beat a team like Pittsburgh as soundly as Oklahoma has today. And there's a pass drilled toward number 24, Stennett. Looks like we're going to have a flag here against Oklahoma. Number 29, Ricky Dixon, who had intercepted the touch, uh, the pass and run for a touchdown a little while ago, may be flagged here. Once again, the new rule comes into effect. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage rather than at the point of the spot if it's more than 15 yards. If the pass is less than 15 yards, the catchable pass, the penalty is at the point of the infraction. Defensive pass interference, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Incomplete in the end zone intended for Jeff Casper. Once again to Jim Lampley. Lob pass toward Bill Wallace in the end zone is incomplete. And now we've got six seconds. I expect Florida State to be very prominent before the year's done. Bob Bowden is one of the great coaches in America as we look at Barry Switzer. Bowden, Bob is a 
combines a good running game with an excellent passing game can score a lot of points as witnessed by the game today. The teams are good offensive. Kentucky score was impressive too over Indiana today. This should be the last snap of this ball game. Bob passed toward the corner. Casper trying to run to it. Can't do it. And we'll get one more. We've got two seconds to play. Well, our congratulations to Barry Switzer and his staff, as Keith Mitchell, from across the country into the Panther Stadium and win very impressively, both with the offense and defense. This is the worst loss for a Pitt team since uh, Penn State beat him in 1981, 48 to 14. That was a day when everything blew up in the Panthers' face. And it has today. Cummings pass, drop, game is over. Your final score. The Oklahoma Sooners, 42, Pittsburgh, 10. And so the Sooners come east and come off a very impressive victory. Oklahoma Sooners, 2-0 now with a 42-10 victory over the Pitt Panthers. The Panthers are now 0-2. Travel arrangements made through, promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Tokyo from more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.